Hi, I'm PJ McCabe, writer and director of The Beta Test, and you are listening to the Horror Squad Podcast. Squad podcast episode number 202. Tonight we're talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife currently in theaters. I'm one of your co-hosts Todd. We have Steve and Sam. Joe is running a little late. I think he had an itchy butthole. He was wiping because he had a big poop earlier. Sam had to lock him out, close the door, get the Febreze, (laughs) candles, everything lit. All of it. Happy Thanksgiving for all the American listeners out there. Happy Thanksgiving everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. I think it's currently Black Friday. This has come out right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So a lot of shopping going on. Did you guys get to buy anything or just seeing what's happening? Just seeing what's happening. Yeah, I don't Did have any plans. That it's a law in Massachusetts that stores can't be opened on Thanksgiving here. It's oh, really? a good law. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Because that's what Joe like- said. But then I tried to ask Michelle, who also lives in Massachusetts, and she was like, I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but when I was looking on just like other stores, just browsing, they're all closed on Thanksgiving, which is not a thing that they did in Kansas anyway. Like literally everyone would be open all day on Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit. I'm glad that at least some places are closed because that sucks, man, for people, you know, have families yeah. and stuff. And like, do you really need to have McDonald's and Target open? Like probably no. not. People will no. survive for one day. Mm-hmm. Well, McDonald's probably open. It's just well, a, McDonald's is good. If you're gonna be open, though, like at least pay them overtime. Yeah. They, get, they get time it. and a half. Probably they should for, get time and a half. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it still sucks, but mm-hmm. yeah, so it's a good time when you're not, uh, you know, you don't observe the holiday to make extra bucks. It's uh, well, when I used to work in retail a long time ago, I used to always work like our Black Friday equivalent, which we call Boxing Day. Mm-hmm. And it was great money because no one else wanted to do it. So it was, I loved it. Yep, the same here. I used to hate working Black Friday, though. You have to get oh, there at like 3 a.m. Super yeah. early. Yeah. Everyone's yelling Super at you for fucking whatever shit they're buying. Yeah. Or one time I was awful. working at Sears. <laughs> I was working at Sears and it was like crazy packed. And then this guy comes in to make a return at like 4.30 in the morning of a shirt. I'm like, what are you doing, buddy, <laughs> with your life wow. right now? Yeah, completely random. Uh, oh, well, yeah. Hope everyone had a lot of good food yesterday, and uh, I hope I have leftovers after speaking. And I know it's in the future and everything, but I'm looking forward to some meatloaf and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to mashed potatoes, corn, and gravy. Mm. Get some little rolls in there, dip the, dip the roll in the gravy? Of course. Nice. Yep. And then maybe uh, watch a little Blood Rage after your meal. And, uh, yes, Evil Todd. <laughs> yeah, Evil Todd. They, they actually just put it on Shutter for the <laughs> holiday. So good on Shutter to make it available for everyone. Yeah, it's definitely a good movie. I think that's what we reviewed last year for Thanksgiving, if I remember. Didn't we do? I think we did Pilgrim. a double feature. I hated the Pilgrim or something like that, where like a Pilgrim moves into a guy's house. No, a reenactor and reenactor Pilgrim goes into some guy's house. Right. What was it called? Was it Pilgrim? So I, I couldn't see it it was a, like Hulu exclusive so i could only watch blood rage terrible yeah i'm not i'm not sad i missed it uh todd you're going on vacation doing anything spooky or fun while you're up there um you know getting a cabin down in tennessee which is like a very popular like uh outdoorsy location gatlinburg and uh gonna be there for the week and there's one horror thing we're doing is uh something called like zombie outbreak or something like that where it's like a really it looks really cheap and corny on the website, but it looks fun too. Like it's like a little maze and shit where they have zombie animatronics coming at you. And it was part of the uh, Wax Museum combo pack ticket. So I'm like, why not? It's five minutes away from the Wax Museum. So that's going to be fun. Awesome. That sounds like fun. Is it just your immediate family, like you and your wife and kids? Yes. No one wants to travel yet. So mm-hmm. just us. Oh, well, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Cool. And Sam, what's your Thanksgiving like? plan so what do you guys do uh, usually around this time of year um so usually i cook breakfast thursday morning and then we watch i always forget the title of it but it's the trains planes automobiles movie i love that movie and then we'll probably head over to joe's family that must be a hectic adventure (laughs) it is so hectic nothing against them it's just 
I've always had like smaller Thanksgivings growing up and stuff. And there's just a lot of people and a lot of energy and it's a lot for a person, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you have people and ghosts. It's just like a whole sh- uh-huh. smorgasbord. Of, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just energy. talk to Patty about ghosts. Yeah, please do. Please, please convince her to come <laughs> back on the show. Uh, I know a lot of people would love to see her again. And, yeah. Uh, ask more questions. So that would be awesome. Great. Um, so just so everyone knows, usually we do the question segment around this time, but the questions are like 90% Ghostbusters, which is not too surprising because it's a big franchise. So we will do it at the end of the show after we do the review because a few of them are spoilery questions and uh, we'll just discuss them at that time. You want to get into some what watch? Yeah, I have a very small one. My first one is going to be uh, over on Halloween Happy's Instagram. It's a reel for her Candyman uh, box that she got. A lot of cool the stuff. Best, Todd. You're welcome. It's a beanie. You got a Blu-ray. You got like a little mirror thingy. You got a bunch of candy. You got a lot of cool stuff in it. So um, that's awesome. Go he- head over to Halloween Happy. And then I'm still plugging away at the uh, Outsider on HBO Max. I think I'm uh, nine episodes in out of 12. Um, it's kind of lost my interest. I think the book was a lot better. Um, it's just like, I don't, they, they kind of, the, the plot itself in the book was kind of hard to translate to the film and it's it, it kind of shows. It's a little bit too long. It should have been eight episodes and that's it. Um, and I'm on like I three more to go. I'm like, eesh. But, um, you know, I'll stick it through. It's very well acted and, you know, the material's good. It's just like a little bit too long, so the outsider that's where it lost me too is that the one with jason bateman that i tried to watch Mm -hmm. yeah he's only in it for like three episodes maybe or two episodes and like a couple flashbacks Mm. do you think they just take too long to get through each like event and big thing that's happening i felt like it just took too many episodes to get to the each point yeah i think that's exactly what it is it's like Like Ralph Anderson, the main cop, is like a really good character. But in the book, like his son didn't pass away from being sick or whatever. His son was at camp or whatever. So that's that's like a huge plot point in the story, which is it's sad and it like it makes for good character development. But then it like takes away from what we're trying to figure out: what who killed Frankie Peterson or what killed Frankie Peterson, who framed Terry Maitland. It's like let's get to that stuff. And then Holly, she's good. She's well acted in the show, but I prefer her character from the book and then the subsequent books that she stars in. Um, but yeah, they just needed to get to the point a little bit more. Cool. Um, Joe, I know you watched Last Night in Soho. I'm assuming that's one of your what watch. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if we were going to review it. So, oh. but I'll talk, I'll talk on it briefly. Um, I don't know how time to review stuff. For I know we are because Sam watched it as well. Yeah. So yeah, Sam and I watched Last Night in Soho, which uh, is the new Edgar Wright. Uh, I'd call it, I don't know. Would you call it a horror movie, Sam? um sure yeah i think yes, I, would. I would i would too i definitely think it's i mean definitely a thriller at the very least but i think there's definitely enough horror elements to consider it a horror movie uh too but yeah for those who don't know edgar wright he's most famously known for Shaun of the dead uh the cord cornetto trilogy i believe is what it's called um but yeah so this one is about a uh aspiring fashion designer who uh, moves to London to uh, pursue her uh, dreams of being a fashion designer. And she, uh, you know, she's kind of an outsider. And she moves into a flat with a bunch of uh, friends and whatnot, and decides, you know, this, you know, really isn't for uh, me being with like all these people and whatnot. So she moves into a new um, apartment complex um, by herself and she starts um, getting visions when she's inside this uh, apartment of this uh, woman in the 60s this takes place in current time uh, and she starts seeing uh, visions of this woman in the 60s um, who uh, we find out I mean this isn't really a spoiler because if you've seen the trailers you find out that she was this woman was murdered uh, and basically, it sends her down this rabbit hole to find out who this uh, woman was and how she was uh, murdered and, and uh, who killed her and all that. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, I mean, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I had like some minor issues with it overall. Um, you know, it, we do get like a big a big twist in here at one point. Um, and I, I didn't love the twist, but I didn't mind it either. 
Um, but I mean, cinematography is great. The acting is a plus, uh, and yeah, overall good story. And yeah, I, it's probably going to, I mean, it, it will probably crack, crack my top five uh, this, for this year. So we'll see. Joe, you are such a liar. Why? Because it's not going to crack your top five. Expose him. Expose him. You did not like the movie. Lion sack of shit. I told you what I rated it. Yeah, but you were talking shit about it. You didn't like it. I you were not. let down, was, so be honest about it. I was let down because I was expecting it to be my favorite of the year. That's why I was let down. But you I were mean, bored. Still- you were bored throughout the whole thing. No. Yes, you were. <laughs> no. All right, what'd you think of it? Um, well, I obviously loved it. And now that I love it, Joe wants to love it because he copies everything that I do. Um, so also the main character, Ellie, she has a gift of where she can see spirits. It's something that her mom also had. And unfortunately, her mom ends up killing herself just because she can't really handle it and it gets to her. Um, So I think that's really cool. And just all of the costumes were like beautiful. The cinematography was amazing. The soundtrack was lovely. The acting was great. It was really good. It's like, um, I don't know. I want to say I feel like a lot of girls and like women will like it because she's like this young girl trying to go after her dreams. Um, And she's like adventurous and just trying to figure out life and all of that stuff. But then she's dealing with these visions that she's having when she's dreaming and I will say like I only watched one trailer for this movie and it was like a really quick silent one it was just like where they it was just her singing Anya Joy Taylor and the second time I watched a trailer which I didn't plan on it it just came on and I was like yeah let me watch it and it literally like tells you the whole movie and so I wish that I didn't watch it but it still was good and it will be in my top five See, I didn't even know she was murdered. I never saw the trailer. Um, yeah, Joe, Joe spoiled not that, that. Not that it matters. Right? I mean, something's up with her, obviously. But good. I won't watch any more trailers then, so I won't be spoiled. Yeah, don't watch anymore. Well, is it something you think we should review if we get a chance or not? Like, you know how movies can be good or bad, but sometimes not much to say about it. Is there a lot there? Yeah, I, there's a lot to say about this one, yeah. Because we do a, there's like a lot of time jumping and there's like... Uh, I think the twist is very, will be divisive amongst a lot of people. So I think that, and it does deal with a lot of uh, social commentary and stuff. So uh, yeah, I think it'd be a really good one to review if we, you know, if we can get to it. All right, cool. So my first one this week is of course the 2021 film. I'm on target for hitting my hundred in a year. I'm at 84 right now. Uh, so this one I watched over on Amazon prime and it is a paranormal activity next of kin so uh this one is the what like sixth installment of the paranormal activity series i believe maybe fifth i'm 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 not sure the story is uh, this girl wants to kind of trace back where her mom had grew up Uh, her mom abandoned her when she was a baby so she never really knew her and she wants to go on this adventure to kind of figure out who she was what kind of person she was and her mother was from an amish community so she brings a camera crew to this Amish community invited by, I guess it's like her cousin or stepbrother or something. Wasn't really sure what he was, but like some kind of family member that she has. And she starts just kind of, you know, filming like a mini documentary about what this Amish community is like, what kind of stuff they do. And weird things start happening as uh, she's there. She starts feeling people are watching her. She finds these like mysterious little cubbies in the rooms that she's staying. And this whole kind of adventure ensues where there's something more to this uh, Amish family than meets the eye. And as she starts discovering, uh, you know, the things about the Amish community, she starts discovering stuff about her mom, which leads to pretty... uh, pretty surprising conclusion which obviously i won't get into i gotta say uh i had very low expectations with this one because when it came out it kind of just came out and that's it It it's almost like a stealth release uh i barely heard anything about it when it came out which was weird for a movie that made so much money in the theater when it first came out that i'm talking about paranormal activities the series and i came out kind of pleasantly surprised you know it's not like a great film but it was a decent watch and there are twists and turns in here that I really didn't see coming. I will say that it didn't feel like a paranormal activity film. It didn't have the kind of 
you know, like camera in the background kind of footage that the Paranormal Activity series is known for. It was really more just a regular found footage film, more akin to something like the taking of Deborah Logan or a bit of Blair Witch Project, because they are doing kind of a documentary about uh, this community. So I think it's uh, worth che- it's it's worth a one time uh, you know view if you can find it on a streaming service. I don't think it's on a streaming service right now in the U.S. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know in Canada it was on Prime. So recommend you check it out. It's Paranormal Activity: Next of Kin. Is it scary, Steve? Uh, it's got some scares. If, some jump scares? Yeah, it's got some jump scares and some... It's like, it's a lot like... Have you seen Taking of Deborah Logan? Yes, it's yeah, been a while. It's, it's a lot like that. Like the type of scares and the atmosphere and the, the, the setting of the camera going into like these dark kind of areas. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it reminded me a lot of that movie. Okay. Except I liked Taking Deborah Logan better just because it's more iconic imagery. But mm-hmm. I do think this is worth a watch. How would you rate it within all of the other ones? Oh, uh, it's one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I liked the first one a lot because it was new. You know, it was like a really unique kind of take yep. on the found footage. Uh, Ghost Dimension, I think it was the last one before this one was surprisingly not too bad. Uh, just a different take again. It was more like webcam uh, in that one with a little girl and stuff. And this one maybe third because it does take a different view of series but i really don't feel like this is part of their normal activity it's like they just took the name to you know give it recognition mm-hmm. and i don't know if that hurt or helped us in the end because i didn't hear a ton of you know chatter about it but uh yeah it's it's still it's a it's a good one what was the one where they are like in the apartment complex and they are like underneath the complex uh, that's a marked ones i think uh is it better than that one uh, it's like on par with that one Mm, okay yeah it's, it's two and three I didn't I think were great it. personally but uh, yeah yeah no, you, yeah you uh, and Joe I know Joe would like it this is like right on. it's like in a forest with found footage and you know spooky other things I won't spoil but it's it's right down Joe's alley but yeah I think you would all worth a watch anyone else got anything um yeah Sam and I watched uh Ghostbusters one and two to prep for uh tonight's movie and I mean, what's there really to say about the original Ghostbusters? There's probably a little more to say about the second one. I mean, the original one, classic, still holds up. Uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, I Sam, though, hadn't seen it in a while, so I'd love to hear her thoughts. Oh, would you? Yes. <laughs> um. So, yeah, it had been a while to where I couldn't. I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid, but I just only remembered, like, the fun scenes. Like, I never really picked up the story and everything like that. So it was pretty much like a first time watch, I guess you could say. Um, But I had to ask Joe like a lot of questions because I couldn't remember anything and it was good. Um, The second one, I wasn't, my attention was like hard to keep. um, It was hard to keep my attention with number two, but it was good. But I am glad that I rewatched them going into the new Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah, I so I had like a lot of very fond memories of part two because it was like on TV all the time growing up, like over part one. Um, so like I like remembered like loving part two. Um, watching it now, it had been a while. It, it's it's okay, but it there's a lot of problems with that one. Um, but it's still like a good movie, but like comparing it to the original, it's like not even in the same realm uh i think vigo is a pretty lame villain uh overall um but i remembered it was max von uh Sadow that did the voice this time uh Finally. steve <laughs> while watching but watching it i was like oh, all right i was like oh, i'm gonna remember this now that i watched it rewatched it but yeah i mean it, it's an okay one i feel like they just kind of copied the original like almost like identically like there's all of the same beats are there like instead of the state puff marshmallow man they use the statue of liberty in this one and like i i don't know like i just felt like there was a lot of the same beats um so like it, it made it a little more of a chore to get through um but i mean i still really enjoyed it i get I, three i rated it uh three and a half over on letterbox and the original five out of five obviously you didn't like the little dweeb Dr. Janos or whatever his name is? Janos. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there yeah, trying, he, to get, trying to get no, up in Dana? He sucks. <laughs> he, his character was awful. Like, they, 
Yeah. What? Like, He's hilarious. <sighs> no. Peter's I like, did... what is your accent from? Or whatever. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I didn't like him, and I didn't like. Yeah, I just didn't like the two villains there. They just, they just didn't do it for me. So they dragged the movie down for me personally. But I, I, I love number two. Like, <laughs> I'll still watch it. You know, a few times a year. It's a river of slime. Just, yeah. If it no, is... I mean, yeah. I'll, the rest of the movie's all great. Yeah, I love the river of slime, and I love when they're in the the subway and the ghost train comes through. Oh, I mean, the cor- the courtroom scene, I fucking adore. Yeah, was, yeah. Like, that whole scene is is fun mm-hmm. and. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I like on Ghostbusters too as well. I, I know it's like goofy and stuff, but you know, I, everything with that slime, like just playing with a toaster and I don't know, there's just, they always, I always loved it. Mm-hmm. I, I'd agree it's a step down. It's hard to compare. Yeah, but that's, yeah. I, I still love it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's they, like a four they, and a half, four instead of a four and a half for me. Yeah, the, see the, the issue that I think they had is that there was the movie that was kind of serious but still like jokey but they had the, by that point the cartoon and they're trying to please both audiences so i think they made it a little more goofy in the second one to kind of try to strike the balance between the real ghostbusters fans and the ghostbusters fans so that's probably where i guess they heard it a little bit is that lack of focus uh sam did you have something else before i move on to my last one um yeah just briefly so i kn- i know that we're planning on reviewing the chucky um show but i have to say i'm not crazy about the people like andy and christine i don't even know what her fucking name is in the movie but i do i think that they are bringing the show down like they should have just left it to the kids it's more enjoyable that they are holding it up just fine is their acting bad or just a storyline it's just like Tiffany. I love that she's in it. Like I like her. I don't know. Maybe just because it's her, but I don't know. This last episode, they only had Andy and Kyle in it the first few minutes, like a brief moment. So I don't think they're gonna be in it a lot because there's only two more episodes. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know. I just felt like they thought that they had to have them involved to bring the older people like us to watch it, but. I'm not really entertained when they're on screen. It just, it goes on too much. It's too, it's too like, um, it's muddy. It's like watered down. I know that that tells you what I really feel about it, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. So my last one this week, still 2021 film, also on Amazon Prime, and that's a movie called The Manor. So in this one, a, uh, an elderly woman, she's turning 70 years old. Uh, she falls at a party and she's brought to the hospital and uh, they find out that she has like the beginning stages of dementia. So she's placed into a home and uh, she starts like noticing weird things happening at the home. She sees other patients acting strangely and she sees this like kind of demon thing uh, coming after her and this whole thing. So she trying to like convince her family that she uh, doesn't belong there. She doesn't need to be there doctor tells her that she's getting she has like a type of dementia called parkinson dementia and that all her visions and all of her things are just in her head and the staff is kind of treating her strangely and stuff like that so a good portion of the movie is trying to decide are the things that are happening real or is it just her dementia that's uh, acting up but uh, there's a twist kind of midway to three quarters through the film that definitively i guess answers that question which i won't say obviously and uh yeah then it's dealing with the consequences of that twist for the rest of the film uh the movie is uh is okay you know there, there's some good performances here uh i was really kind of struggling as to whether or not the things that were happening were real or not but uh, there's clues that they start kind of uh, dropping breadcrumbs as to if it is her with the dementia or it is actually a demon. It kind of gave me shades of that movie we watched last year with that dealt with dementia. And I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately. I think a few of us had it on our top 10. I didn't, but I think a few of you guys did. Um, but anyway, it, it kind of gave me shades of that, but it wasn't as good. Like it's just, it was a little bit more in your face in this one. Um, so it, it was like an okay film. Not something I'd go out of my way to recommend, but not something I'm mad that I watch. So that's the banner over on Amazon Prime. Was it scary though? No, the the well, you know, like the creature at first really reminded me of a sleep paralysis type creature. 
uh you know you could kind of see in the background and it was dark and it was always at night that the creature would come out Mm -hmm. but as you get a clearer picture of the creature as the movie progresses it looked a little goofy to be honest with you uh it looked like a popular pop culture icon which i i won't i won't spoil but when i thought of that it was like spoil it yeah it's Groot. Groot. groot Oh, what's his oh, name? Really? Groot. <laughs> Groot. It looks like a big tree. Like a tree. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And w- once I got that in my mind, it kind of like took away the scariness of it. You know? um, That's fine. So, yeah, it's, it's just one of those situations, I guess, where maybe we saw too much of it for a while there. But yeah, it's, it's a passable film, just not something I'd go out of my way you know, to check out. It's definitely better than the rest of the stuff I watched yesterday. I, I watched four in a row, just back to back to back to back to trying to hit wow. my uh, my quota and the other three were just awful like all bottom of the list <laughs> films so i'm running out of films you know well that's because you watch movies about toilets that sh- take no, shit you know, at least those... shit come out of them and yeah i know but them. at least those <laughs> like you go in you know knowing what you're expecting like these are all all the ones i watched yesterday are like serious like ghost films you know i watched one on shutter um i watched one on uh, like one of the other services uh, netflix or something so you'd expect them to at least be passable like none of these were to be <laughs> originals you know it's not great white or anything like that it's like just you know, i guess movies i would expect more out of because i'm trying to like uh, i'm trying to boost my top 10 that that's what i'm really trying to do right now and i'm just not finding them but i do have a list of like four or five films i'm just waiting to see if they hit streaming instead of paying like 20 bucks to rent them and if they don't hit like streaming antlers. by like December twentieth, then I'll just I'll just rent them, you know, because I do want to see them. Mm. I'm holding out right to the end to make sure uh, they don't go streaming like for Christmas or some shit. Yeah, well, like I really only need, I really only need to, only need to see Antlers and uh, Soho and Resident Evil comes out soon. This uh, like this week does it? Yeah, nice. Here, I'll, I'll I would rank. I would recommend the the night house. Yeah, John. Night- I think you would like that what one. What was it called? Night. night uh, the, the night house. Yeah. Okay, I think you mentioned that one. Mm-hmm. I think I have in mind to watch this on Letterbox. Yeah, my list that I really want to see house, this year. Yeah. Sorry, just night house. <laughs> is a uh, sensor come true? Uh, night house. Oh, the car uh, one too. Uh, a Titan. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. What's the sensor one? Uh, sensor is so- really good. Yeah, it Joe, is, Joe is recommended scary? that one. Um. Um. No. Not really. I mean, well, the ending gets a little spooky, I suppose, but it's a Joe movie. What about the Guillermo del Toro? Is that this year or is that next year? Which one's uh, del Toro? The one with Bradley Cooper in oh. it. I forget. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean saw, Sam saw the poster for it. Um, I just saw a trailer for well, it. Well, we went and saw Ghostbusters. Uh, I think it comes out next year. I don't think it's, yeah, out yet. I don't think it's coming out this year. Yeah. Did anyone get the Ecto 1 popcorn bucket or. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, I tried. Not, not a thing here. <laughs> yeah, they had it on display at my theater, and I went to the girl. I was like, "Can I get that?" And she was like, "Oh no, we don't have any more." And I was like, "Well, can I just have that one?" She's like, "No." She's like, "That one's like special." I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> In other words, <laughs> it's mine, bitch. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's for the employees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dirty. Mm-hmm. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. All right. Trivia points are as follows. Myself in the lead with 110, Steve 106, Joe 103, Sam 74. There's a lot of shit talking that I want to address on letter or not letterbox on discord about me being the lead. Deal with it. Ooh, who's right? talking shit, right? Todd? Everybody. Everybody Uh-oh. has something to say about my, my two P good about about to be three P. What's up? Well, we'll talk you know about what? it in the uh, questions period. There's a the, the burden is on it. Joe, Sam and Steve to beat me, not for me to lose. So I'm not taking it. no burden. Uh-uh. All right. So no. fuck y'all. That's how you're gonna be. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> We're not the one saying anything. <laughs> Todd, Todd's going. Brady feels. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is Todd's heel turn. I've been waiting for. I love it. Yeah, and <laughs> to address Mondo's little jab, 
on the Alexa Speaking Game podcast. Yes, we play trivia, and yes, I am terrible at it. I am third place <laughs> with my score being 35, Mondo 52, Steve 67. So you can oh, see shit. the disparity in the score there. But suck it. This is at, uh, the Horror Squad podcast. So that's Tom Brady playing baseball. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, who would like to lead? I'll go. Um, so I just um, Kayla did send me a series of questions, but I will save them for next week because the Ghostbusters, I've been waiting for a Ghostbusters Ooh, episode. Steve Originals. So these are all Steve Originals and all Ghostbuster related. I so. love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you guys I'm, just watched it. So no, Sam oh, yeah. and I should be fresh here. Should be. All right. First question. In Ghostbusters, who is originally cast as Lewis Tully? Oh, uh, John Candy. Correct. Nice one. Uh, I just read he, that. I just read that like two days ago. <laughs> uh, he became a diva. He said, "I will only really? do it if I can speak German, and I have two two big dogs." And he refused yeah. to do anything if he's not Punk. that character. So they're like, "No, nah, fuck that." We could get uh, Rick Moranis, who they also knew because it's, it's all like a group of Canadians that made this film, and they're like, "We'll just get him for cheap." <laughs> so Moranis is amazing. I'm glad they yeah, he's him. fucking yeah, he fantastic. Was, yeah, so. he's, per- he's perfect. I, all right, guys, been... who brought the pooch? <laughs> <laughs> Candy would have been good too, though. He would it, I think. I, I mean, I don't know. No, I think he would. Mm, I don't know. I feel like he would have come off as slimy. And I think like, the movie would have became like a John Candy vehicle, almost like it's mm. he's too he's too big, you know, to, for that role. I think it would have yeah. overshadowed yeah. the Ghostbusters a little bit. Okay. Where it's like with Rick, I feel like you don't want to hurt his feelings because he's so like little and puny and nerdy. But if it was the other guy it'd be like get a fucking clue you fucking creep <laughs> okay well i'm going to go to bat for john candy here and mention one movie where he was a side character and did not overshadow sure. home alone home alone he was a great little side <laughs> character in that. yeah <laughs> and he was great in that and he had his little cute little scene and uh did not overshadow i guess so. But I guess he would have been a bigger role in Ghostbusters. Yeah, he's integral to yeah. the plot in Ghostbusters. Whereas yeah. He's yeah. Not so much in Home Alone. He's just a regular. Hey, he, he got the mom home in Home Alone. So that's it's true. Very, very big. Yeah, and just on a quick side note, I watched uh, Home Sweet Home Alone. Not the worst movie I've seen. That's all I'm going to say. Sam and I were talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not good. I want to watch it. But it's not the worst. <laughs> so take that for what it is. Not much. <laughs> home sweet home alone um okay i'll go next so um i have two joe originals this week Ooh. because it is thanksgiving of weekend of course so happy thanksgiving of course to everyone so i have a couple of uh thanksgiving horror themed trivia questions to start us off tonight so the first one being this thanksgiving horror movie was the film debut of actor ted Raimi. blood rage Blood Rage is correct. Good job, Steve. Yeah, Got at the see. beginning, at the, in yes. the bathroom, right? Yes. Yep. Right. He's, <laughs> a, he's the bad boy. Right. <laughs> the biker. That's why I, I had Blood Rage in my like chamber ready to go. Like, there's not that <laughs> many Thanksgiving movies. No, so, there's not. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. Good movie. Um, Todd Original. Sam, I need you paying attention now. Okay. In The Conjuring 3. Boo. What, what's the name of the character that the Warrens are trying to prove was possessed? Oh my God. Tom. I can't even oh fucking God. remember. <laughs> Steven? No. Bobby? <laughs> no. Tom? No, no Tommy either. Joe, what you got? I don't even. I, no? I don't remember. Character names, man. We're the worst. Arnie. <laughs> Arnie. Arnie. Oh my God. That's right. Arnie, the one man party. Ooh, I like it. Mm-hmm. werewolf my ass he killed that guy all righty what was the budget for insidious the original oh. 12 yes. million 20 million 30 million what are you guys high it's like no. 5 million <laughs> was it closest or had to be spot on okay what'd you guys guess i'll do closest no guess again okay. and then i'll do closest oh shit so we're gonna go she said, she said are we high four million <laughs> we got four million on the board um i guess six million we got six million ten million we got ten 
It's 1.5 million. Wow. That's, that's, that's I, wow. That's low. crazy. That's really low. Well, what do you, why, why would it be so high? Because you have to pay the actors. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the you effects to... were pretty good. Well, yeah. Like, but uh... this is like a long time ago. This is like the that's first like 2010. Long yeah, yeah, but not that long ago. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that long ago. And you had Patrick Wilson, Rose Byrne, Lynch yeah, J. But... Like, mm-hmm. It was some high production and, value too. Yeah. And there were like some, yeah. And there, mm-hmm. I felt like there some of the effects like definitely would have cost money. Those are extremely profitable then. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like, movies, are ex- <laughs> movies are expensive. And speaking well, yeah, of that, but... Sam, did you, Sam, I don't know if you talked, did you talk about how we went to the Hocus Pocus 2 filming locations? No. We did. Sam, do you want to talk about it? Did you have fun? You can talk about it. Um, yeah, it was fun. We went to uh, Newport, Rhode Island, which is where they're currently filming Hocus Pocus. Sorry to let you Puritans down, but they will not be filming it in Salem. Uh, not all and... of it. Not all. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, we went, we went to two locations, actually. So the first one was in Newport, um, which is like a really cute town, actually. We've never been there before, um, but it's right on the waterfront. It, it kind of reminded me of Salem, I guess. In a little, it had definitely had that small town feel to it. Um, a lot of little shops and stuff. But uh, so in their town square, they had a like massive uh, like Halloween festival set up. That is supposedly uh, called Salem Scarefest, which we don't have here, but it is a weekend. They had it set up as like a weekend uh, Halloween festival, and it was really cool. They had like all these like vendor table uh, tents set up, and they had this like big stage, which the Sanderson sisters are going to perform uh, their song on for this movie. And uh, yeah, this, so that was really, it was really, really, really cool to see. And then uh, right across the street, they had the Sanderson sister house um, museum from the first movie they had set up. They had like the, you know, cause I could tell from like the big wheel that uh, they got on the side there. So that was really, really cool to see. And then we uh, made the trip down to Lincoln, Rhode Island, which was about a half hour away, uh, which is uh, on a farm. They uh, built a, uh, like an old timey village. So like a, like a 1600s uh, village where they're going to be filming uh, some of the, uh, I guess, scenes from when the Sanderson sisters were like little kids or something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, really, really awesome to see uh, like the behind the scenes movie magic. So yeah, it was really cool. Very cool. So you guys left Salem to go look at a recreation of Salem. It's great. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like the pictures though. If uh, you guys want to check it out, it's on uh, I don't know Sam's Instagram. I don't know if you posted it, Joe on yours, Joe's House of Horror. Yeah, I got some yeah. on there too. All right, cool. So how check happy. out check check out Sam's because she like has a reel and it's she has like some amazing video footage and shit. All right, you guys ready for question number two? Yes. In Ghostbusters, the gatekeeper is named Zool. What's the name of the keymaster? Vince. Gosh. What? Uh, yeah, that's it. Vince. Vince, Vince mm-hmm. Clortho. Yeah, I couldn't remember the last. That's name. fine. Yeah, no, Vince is, uh, is good. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joe has it on his computer. He's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched it. I love that scene too. By the way, when they have the little, I didn't, I didn't, I never really noticed this before because well, it had been a while since I seen Ghostbusters. But when they put that like thing on Vince, and then mm-hmm. on the TV you can see the dog right. like thing. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking great movie. Your turn, Joe. My turn. Okay. Tagline. Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving horror tagline. So it should narrow it down quite a bit (laughs) for you guys here. Okay. This Thanksgiving, survival is a blessing. Incorrect. The pilgrim. Pilgrim. Todd, you got it. It's It's really a 50-50 shot for me. (laughs) 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 I hated that movie so much. Pilgrim and underrated. Thanksgiving oh, no, hard. <laughs> oh boy. I'm gonna just watch it by myself because I'm the only one that liked it. So <laughs> all right. Here we go. Sam, ready? ready I got Todd. some characters for you. No, because I know you know this one. Ready? Maybe. Yep. Name the three lead characters in Joyride. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just watch the last candy week. cane. No, <laughs> uh, <rest> and <laughs> incorrect. Venna. Okay. I need the heroes, the kids. Fena. That's one for sure. Right, we need, we need a. Uh... Thomas. No. <laughs> Venna. 
You're the only one that's guessed one name right, so let's get another shot here. Man, we, we are uh, so bad with character names. It's crazy. Paul Walker and uh, what's his face? I, I can't even remember. Man, I can't eat it anymore. I'm going to become more. Fuller. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> hey, just... hey, Blank and Clark travel Lois. across North. Lewis, it's there Lewis. You go. <laughs> All right. Good job. Because he goes, he said, they said Lewis. They said Lewis. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well. That did not help at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> all right, Sam. All righty. I'm more fuller. I don't even know that's a word. <laughs> what was the release date for Oops. one of my favorite films, Get Out? 2017. <laughs> What'd you say, Todd? 2017? No, I need like month. Oh, the full day? No. Feb- oh, Feb- February 13th, 2019. Okay. February 13th, 19. Yeah. I believe uh, it was an I believe it was an early release. Uh so I'm gonna say January 10th, 2018. Okay. March, March 20th, 2018. Todd, that's my birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> my birthday. Okay. Repeat again, Todd, and repeat again, Joe. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, Joe's birthday, but what year oh, did you say? Uh, 2018. 2018. And I said January 10th, 2018. Todd's the closest. <laughs> Wait, oh. yeah. Because yes. well, it's, yes. well, you guys said, are off. But yeah, I said the wrong, t- wrong year. It's well, February 24th, it? 2017. See, that's oh, how good it is because you guys originally. think it just came out. Yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I knew it was February. I just didn't remember the year. It's already that Date old. Date night. Good times. Yeah, it is old, huh? Oh, yeah, and, shit. Yeah. And then What's next, the next year... one, don't. N- nope. 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 There you go. Don't is that trailer from Grindhouse. Mm. Oh, yeah. Edgar, right? That's the a good don't. one. <laughs> yeah. All right. My last question. Still yeah, Daddy. Go- still Ghostbusters? Oh. We're switching gear a little bit here. Ooh. Who voices Peter Venkman in the real Ghostbusters? Oh, um, what? The cartoon. The oh. um, the guy that um, that guy voices Mo from The Simpsons. Wrong. That guy. No. Mo Sislak. The guy who vo- voices Bobby from Bobby's World, Howie Mandel. <laughs> That's Howie Mandel. Mandel. Oh, nice. Also Gizmo. Right. I, I don't even. I couldn't even tell you. I watched the cartoon, but I don't remember. Can you give us a clue? But we won't. Is it like a, a well-known actor? Uh, no, uh, it's not. But I'll give you guys Feldman. a clue. I'll give you guys a clue because I mean his name is still known. It's not like uh, so. Uh, Bill Murray voiced the live-action character that this guy is known for for cartoons. Garfield. And, that's right. But what's his name? <laughs> I I couldn't tell you. <laughs> The cat. Wait, say that again? (laughs) So Bill Murray voiced Garfield in the live action film. Uh And this guy voiced Peter Venkman in the cartoon. So he did they they like reverse roles. Like he did. So the voice of who's the voice of Garfield in the cartoon basically. Essentially. (laughs) Who also voiced Peter Venkman in the Gorilla Ghostbusters. Interesting. I didn't know this guy was does he do horror cons? (laughs) <laughs> he, he's passed along since for a while oh okay yeah. John Cleese is my guess Max von Sydow <laughs> no. right. no. Vincent you guys, Price you guys obviously don't know <laughs> imagine it's, uh, some ghosts. it's Lorenzo Music uh, okay super yeah, famous voice actor oh, no. rest in peace though don't you younglings <laughs> also R. rest in peace to JFK it's the anniversary of his death oh oh and, well, and uh, Harold Ramis yes, uh, yesterday's birthday Harold Ramis so rest, oh, in peace, uh. rest in peace we'll, we'll talk about that really yeah. I'm gonna cry. It's a loss, man. It's a big loss. I'm not gonna cry again, Sam. I probably will when we talk about it. Never mind. Hey, Joe. All right. My turn. All right. Oh, and Todd, I've, JFK is from from here, and there's he has a huge presidential library. So if you ever make your oh, way, oh yeah, here, definitely. Yeah, I've been to the Nixon Library. That's pretty cool. Oh, cool. And the and the Reagan Library too. Nice. All right, my last one for tonight comes from Kayla. So thank you, Kayla. Kayla. In the 1981 slasher flick, The Burning. What is the killer's weapon of choice? Shears. Spade. Correct. Spade. Garden shears. Dang it, nice job. Spade, dumbass. 
<laughs> All right. Everyone, here we go. Paul Rudd played Tommy Doyle in part six, mm -hmm. Anthony Michael Hall in part 12, in the terrible part 12, might I add. <laughs> Come Who on. played him in part one? Austin Austin. Austin. Uh, uh, Brian Austin Matthews. Correct. Brian Austin Green? Matthew Austin. <laughs> <laughs> No. Fuck. <laughs> Isn't that a Power Ranger Joe? Brian Austin Green. No, that's yeah. he's from uh now two one oh. Who the fuck am I thinking of then? Is it a Power Ranger? Oh. There's a Power Ranger that has a name like that. Yeah, I think the Green Ranger has like the Fuck name the Green Ranger, that. dude. It's all about the Red Ranger. <laughs> I agree. You're close, Steve. Austin, yeah, I know. I have his autograph, so I'm trying to picture it right now. <laughs> it's <laughs> not Austin it. Brian or Brian Austin or nope. Matthew. I don't know. Something along those lines. Brian Andrew. Andrew. Uh, Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have an autograph of uh, him and Kyle Richards in the same nice. print. So. That's cool. Yeah. Housewives. Yep. <laughs> I got I got a super cheap too, so I was happy. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's yeah, good. on an eBay auction for one dollar. Yeah, I, I feel like Kyle. I feel like Kyle Richards' autograph alone probably is goes for a decent amount. Yeah, wait, six, wait. her her autograph is like sixty, and I, I got them, both them for sixty. What has she done besides Halloween? Housewives, uh, she's real, a real housewife. That's, housewives. Not, that's not that's not a thing though. That's a, oh no, it's, it's, so a, it's a thing. Popular. It's a thing. Trust she, me. Was in, <laughs> she was also in Little House on the Prairie. Oh, oh there you go. And she's yeah. a TV producer mm -hmm. and a director. Would and you guys writer. have got my alternate question of? Who was originally going to be cast as Tommy Doyle in the last movie? It wasn't Paul Rudd. It would have been Paul Rudd. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I thought that was a little bit too easy. Yeah, like, which Disney probably squashed that for sure. Yeah, yeah, because then there would have been like people would have but, it would no, have become like canon. People would have got confused. Yeah, that, that's like. why they didn't do it all yeah. the least because it was confusing the canon. At least had mm -hmm. scheduling conflict, but who knows? Yeah, no. where does the word canon come from? It's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Either. Like everything else, probably Latin. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, like, no what she means mean? like the like term. the the using it for movie lore. Mm -hmm. I don't know where. It's a, my trivia question. Okay, oh, is that um, your trivia question? <laughs> from the Greek no. verb yeah. uh, canologicus. Yeah. And like yeah, and like retcon. Yeah, right. right. I don't know where the fuck that comes from either. But, it, but it's like a word we always knew without. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just one of those things that we just accept yeah. it for what it is now. Mm -hmm. All righty, here's my last question. Hold on, I'm looking up movie canon. Okay. Where did the <laughs> I term... I want to know. All right, the use of the word canon originated in reference to a set of texts derived from biblical canon, the set of books regarded as scripture as contrasted with non-canonical... I don't know, some biblical word. So okay. biblical, cool. I guess. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. A little trivia right there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just use it as like, that's canon? Or that right. messes with the canon of it. Both. Either way. Yeah. Oh. The only the first time I heard that word was when people would talk about su supernatural. And I always thought it was um like a gun. No, it was like I would see it when they would use it as Sam and Dean, like they have they're like boyfriends instead of brothers. Like when it was like um, oh, yeah. guy on guy relationships. Was that a subplot in the show? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I heard it first with Star Wars when the books started coming out. Uh -huh. We're asking if the books were canon, and that was like a whole thing. In, yeah, in so, if I something guess. is canon, what does that mean, though? That it's that means it's part of the main timeline of okay. that series. All right. Well, for all of you <laughs> who are listening, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who learned something today, <laughs> or maybe I am. All right. My question is. And Kayla, if you're listening, I was scared to read your trivia questions because apparently Todd got those <laughs> ones last week. So, fresh for shark. <laughs> okay, I got another release date for you. All right. Tell me the release date for Happy Death Day. Oh, oh boy. I fucking hate that movie. Whoever gets the closest gets the point. It's pretty um, easy. January 30th, 2017. All right. It's like the dead month for movies. I'm going to go May 15th, 2016. Oh, 2016. Okay. I'm going to say February 14th, 2017. Oh, it might be a Valentine's Day movie. What did you say, Todd? Uh, 
January, I, I, th- I think January 20th, 2017, I think. You did. Say, okay. I can't do the math right now, but it's October 7th, 2017. I don't remember what Joe fucking said. I already forgot. So I Joe said February. Yeah, so, so I'm closest. Joe's closest. Joe's closest. So yeah, fuck. baby. <laughs> I did a good night. I, had a I good was in the night. year, though, so technically. Yeah. <laughs> so was I. Yeah, so, so was he. No, he wasn't. I, I'm the one who wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> or was I? All right. <laughs> no, it's all right, that. guys. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I'm in the lead with 112, Steve 109, Joe 106, Sam 75. That concludes woo woo. game number 45. Getting a little closer every week. Well, you <laughs> got one. You gained one. Gain one. Hey, you know, right, come on, see. Everyone's rooting against me, so you know what? <laughs> I'm going to use that. Actual use that school. to motivate you. Okay, Ghostbusters Afterlife, currently in theaters, uncover the past, protect the future. When a single mom and her two kids arrive in a small town, they begin to discover their connection to the original Ghostbusters and the secret legacy the grandfather left behind. Um, This one sets up uh, in the past with, uh, clearly it's Egon. Um, He's living on a farmhouse and he's like trying to fight a ghost. He's trying to do this elaborate trap and the ghost kind of breaks through his um, defenses and ends up killing him. Fast forward, and we are in uh, young kids and a single mom. She's uh, getting evicted from her home, gets kicked out. So turns out that the grandfather of this people, or these people, left him his dilapidated farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. So they pack up everything. They go to this house. We got the teenager p- played by Finn Wolfhard. Uh, we got the young girl. I think she's 12, played by McKinney Grace, or McKenna Grace, actually. They arrive in this town, super, not backwards, but super small, you know, like not a lot to do. So they're instantly like recognized as the new people. Uh, The kids go to school, meet Paul Rudd, who's a teacher there. He's also a seismologist, and he's trying to figure out why the town is plagued by earthquakes because he can't figure out where the earthquakes are coming from. Um, It kind of like we we uncover that like the girl is pretty much like a very nerdy type, very socially awkward, things like that. She starts uncovering the science and experiments that were in this house. yeah. Meanwhile, Finn Wolfhard discovers that the Ecto-1 is in the, the garage. He starts repairing it, um, restoring it, brings it back to life. And then we figure out um, that the grandfather was Egon from the original ones. And these are his grandkids. And Egon is, yeah, I'll just leave it at that, I guess. Um, so we, we go around with the kids and the, and the wife and uh, Paul Rudd's character as they try to uncover why Egon just abandoned all the other Ghostbusters a long time ago and took off to the random farmhouse to live a life of isolation and what the hell is going on in this town. Um, Steve, I mean, this is, you're clearly the bigger, the biggest fan of the Ghostbusters. So take it away. Oh my God. Like I've been waiting for this movie really for 30 years. (laughs) Like, you know, ever since uh, Ghostbusters 2 came out, I've been wanting some semblance of a Ghostbusters 3. The closest we got was the video game in um, like 2015 or so, or maybe even 2010, I don't remember, around that era, uh, which was kind of a Ghostbusters 3 with all the original voices. But finally, we get a proper Ghostbusters 3 because Ghostbusters 2016, although it had some things going for it, was not really a Ghostbusters film in my eyes because it wasn't in the same canon as the other ones so I I came into this with high hopes kind of high expectations because of everything you know we had first I'd waited a long time for part three then we had to wait like an extra year and a half because of COVID there was just a lot of build-up to my anticipation of this movie finally came out and I gotta say oh thank god I fucking just loved it. Like, I loved it. I was worried um, for you, Steve. Oh, me too. I was really worried um, for you. I'm like, I don't, I don't want him to not like this. Even, like, I'd say halfway through the movie, I was kind of like, it's good. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not loving it, you know? But goddamn, the last half hour just, like, like there's there's issues with it, and we're going to get into it. Uh, it's not a perfect film. I don't think it's better than the original Ghostbusters. I know that was something that we had heard uh, prior to release. But, uh, and maybe they went a little heavy on the nostalgia factor, uh, but I fucking just had a smile on my face the entire time, and then sadness, and then a smile again, and it just hit me in all the right places. I fucking adore this movie, and, you know, of all the movies I watched this year, it's really the first time that I came out of the theater, woke up the next day, I'm like, fuck, I want to go see it again. Like, I just can't wait to see this movie again so loved it 
I'm not sure who's like, I wonder what crowd is saying that the original is not as good. I, I would think it would be the younger crowd that maybe didn't grow up with it. Possibly, yeah. Unless, you know, Joe and Sam say otherwise. But yeah, I'm not getting that. Because you, you can't have this installment without those first two. Otherwise, it, it would just be like an average film. But go ahead, Joe. I know you came off mute a little bit. Uh, yes, I'll go next. Uh, yeah, so I am not definitely not as big of a Ghostbusters fan as Steve, but I still love the franchise. I have very fond memories of it of my childhood um the real i mean the cartoon was like oh i had like all the toys growing up it was just like amazing the firehouse i still like i, I need to find that firehouse like toy because like, i have mine still it's in my you? son's closet yeah my god That's I, awesome, like Todd. i played i played with that so much as a kid i remember like you had like the slime you could buy and it like went through the roof of the firehouse it was so fucking cool um so uh after watching this, I may need to go find one. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I really really enjoyed this one. Um, so our we had a huge our we had a lot of complaints about Halloween Kills with it being um, like fans like there was like too much fan service in it and whatnot. This one does it right. Like there's a lot of fan service in here, but it it like this one actually has like heart and what and like they you could tell like. Like they, you know, it just like gives you like a warm, fuzzy feeling, you know? And I don't know if that's because it's like a horror comedy rather than like a horror movie, um, quite possibly. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to love here. I, I definitely had, like it, like Steve said, it's not a perfect movie. And I, I mean, I think me and Steve shared like the same exact sentiment when he said it that I was like, I was like, oh, okay, this is like a fun movie. But then man, that last half hour really hits you. And it like completely makes the movie um, for me anyway. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'll leave it at that for now. Really, really like this one. Um, yeah, I agree with what has already been said. Um, I thought it was fun. I didn't watch, I only watched one trailer and it was like, not even 30 seconds. Um, so it was just like, I didn't know what to expect. I was, I was expecting it to just be like a fun, cute ride. And that's what it was. The only part I wasn't crazy about was with who they had play. Um, what was the bad person's name? Gozer. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, oh, what's her name? Thank God. She's what a famous actress name? too. <laughs> She's the girl in Tron there um, olivia oh, wilde olivia wilde that's right oh that i just felt like it looked yeah. too much like her and i was like I um know. but yeah i thought mckenna grace was amazing i loved um i loved everyone you know it was sad really sad but like happy sad so i don't really have too much else to add that's new to the combo all right and uh yeah i loved it long story short um you know, like Steve said, I had a smile on my face the entire time, practically. It was, this is what I felt Star Wars should have done when they did the, the new trilogy. Like the first one, Force Awakens, like had a lot of fan service, but it didn't go completely there like this one did. Like, for example, I'm sorry to go back to Star Wars, but Luke Skywalker comes in at the end of that for like three seconds and we don't see shit from him. And then the next two movies ruin him, but let's not get there. But um, with this one, like we, we, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Ghostbusters, don't listen to this episode. Like we see the real Ghostbusters they're not only in there for like a minute like it was like a big fear like oh no like is is this all we're gonna see dan Aykroyd is on the phone they come in there and it's fucking amazing um and i was liking it up pretty much the whole thing like was it predictable like hell yeah like you knew paul rudd and his mom were gonna be the new gatekeepers and everything like that was so obvious um was it like tongue-in-cheek when the cops like who you gonna call uh, absolutely <laughs> but it was like I thought Finn Wolfhard was great. He can be a little bit overbearing sometimes, but I thought he was like good as a teen, you know? And the girl, man, like I saw her in Handmaid's Tale and she played like this little psychopath. But in this one, like she's so adorable and like mm -hmm. she's just perfect. Like this like girl can act, man. I'm like, I'm excited to see what else she can do. Paul Rudd was good. The mom was good. Um, everything about it was just, was just solid. I wish they would have taken a little bit more risk. I guess we can start going to the negatives. Um, I wish they would have done a little bit more risk with it, you know, like they did the safe route. I guess that's like to maybe get the their foot in the door, like do the safe sequel and then go from there. I thought they could have done a little bit different stuff and but they needed like this needed to like set the standard for the 21st century like this is a new Ghostbusters we got the old guys in here. 
but yeah, that, that's my biggest gripe off the bat, besides a couple plot points that I have questions about, is like it was safe 100%, like no risk at all, especially with like the same villain and things like that. And the state puff, why they were cool little marshmallows, like I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. need to see it again. Um, but I have a question before you guys get into your negatives. Why did Egon guide his granddaughter to the trap that had one of the ghosts in it and then released them? Like, what was the point of that? I think he needed somebody to because he knew that it like sooner or later his like trap was going to bust you know it couldn't sustain itself forever and he needed someone that he felt had a the brain capacity and b like the belief that what he was doing was important and solve the mystery to essentially save you know uh, the world from the apocalypse right and his last chance really was this little girl that was a science nerd and that that's why i think that makes sense yeah and you know this all could have been solved too if he would have taken pictures of the well of (laughs) souls or whatever and sent it to his home he's like i'm not making this shit up guys look at this fucking thing (laughs) causing earthquakes but other than other than that like small stuff man i I fucking was into it yeah that little girl too uh sam um i was like man she's like she's so fucking good like she she's so so good in this movie she is i mean far and away like i think she's my favorite part of the movie i mean i which i think is obvious like she's like so like relatable and whatnot and obviously she's like mini egon so and he was always like my favorite ghostbuster anyway so yeah i mean and then sam reminded me that she's actually uh one of the main girls in annabelle comes home which i love that movie as well so um, and she does the song at the end of this movie too that Sam and I listened to today on YouTube for a little bit. So she's she's a, a triple threat apparently, or a double threat for now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to see what this girl does in the future because I feel like she's gonna have a great career ahead of her. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone else was was fine in this. Um, I but she's was the definite standout. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I. I my biggest gripe i guess is that i don't think it was necessary to bring gozer back like we've already been there before and we've already seen that so i mean i did that was more where like i think it was just pure fan service where and it was also what made me like more think well this is like a reboot right and like not like a direct sequel like i feel like they're going back to the same well um where they succeeded before and like steve like todd said i mean that's exactly what todd said playing it safe is exactly what they did here. So I kind of wish they went a different route with the villain and whatnot. I mean, but I, I mean, it's, that's not like a major gripe for me. I mean, I still, it was still cool to see Gozer and the demon dogs back. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, that scene with Paul Rudd in the supermarket is definitely one of the standouts. I fucking love that scene. The marshmallows, although Todd said weren't necessary, I was, so cute. they were like my favorite part. <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the movie, just them fucking destroying each other. It was just like, top notch a plus uh probably one of the few times i like laughed out loud uh while watching it so uh love that love that whole scene i, I kind of agree with what you guys are saying about uh, rehashing the villains um i i feel that they could have had the dogs out there but not make him like the focus i thought the focus villain should have been shandor uh who is the guy who built the town and the guy who built the uh, building from the first one uh especially that it's his like mine and his body is like there you know oh, that's the guy that got ripped in half yeah yeah it's uh fucking j jonah jameson <laughs> and he's played off like basically a joke you know he he finally comes alive after all these years and he's ripped in half like in two seconds and i thought he should have been somehow the main villain where he gained power and they're fighting him because ultimately he's the one responsible for the first ghostbusters so they didn't need to rehash gozer and that was kind of my biggest gripe i guess was that they rehashed you know the key master and the gatekeeper you know almost down to the letter like the same beats almost as the original and it that I thought wasn't needed for this story. So that was, you know, it's still cool to see. And I still smile throughout it because it reminded me of the original, but I think it would have been a stronger film had they had at least a different villain. Um, so that was definitely one of my issues. No uh, Ron Jeremy either. That was a... Like, yeah, uh, no, he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You kind of get parole. <laughs> right. One of my other issues is I wish there were more ghost variety uh during the attack on the town um Mm -hmm. you know both ghostbusters one and two 
had a pretty good variety of ghosts during what is like essentially now a tradition where the ghosts like pop out of wherever they're coming out from and then start attacking the town. You know, in the first one, you had slime. That's where Slimer came from uh, the second time because you see him the first time in the tower and the hotel. And then you see like the, the zombie ghosts and you see all these other ghosts. The second one, they even like went with the Titanic and they had like the ghost under this uh, like kind of French like building thing. But they did have this ghost, which I can't, obviously it's a podcast, so you can't <laughs> see it, but there's a ghost from the real Ghostbusters that's a purple ghost with an eye that like pops out. And that made me smile so hard. They showed in the trailer and we talked about it last week and I was hoping to see more uh, like ghosts from the real Ghostbusters show because they showed that one. I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of just little nods to the show but that was the only one that i noticed anyway so that was a bummer like i just wish there were more but that's really a nitpick because yeah. yeah they had the uh the, the seat that was from the cartoon the uh booster seat or whatever that comes from the, out from the, the toy the, too yeah from the act the acto one. Oh yeah yeah that's, that's right yeah yeah so and uh, which was awesome i love that they did that and that the whole scene where like she's shooting around the town is so fun um i oh they also had the uh Taxi cab zombie mm-hmm. from the first one too was right. in there. Yeah, he's, cool. he, yeah, he's yeah. The that, that was a diner. fun little callback. So here's my big question: Why introduce Muncher instead of just bringing Slimer back? I think they they just need for number one. I think they need to change it up, you know, just to have a new toy. Essentially, I, like I'm not gonna lie, that's probably what it is. Uh, bring another kind of cute, you know, but similar it's like type the creature. Exact same. But also, think, spoiler alert, I think they allude to Slimer being in the next one, if there is a next one, uh, which we'll talk about with the end credit scenes a little bit, I guess, later. Uh, but I think that's what they're referring to with that final end credit shot is the Slimer ghost is going to be in there. <laughs> that's why I think anyway. Um, so I think that's why, you know, they're keeping some things for part two, or if there is a part two, I, I don't know, it, it seems to have done well, but. Yeah, I think that's why we didn't see Slimer. But it was a bummer. I was hoping if I had had my wish to, for real fan service, that Slimer was like part of the Ghostbusters, like he is in the real Ghostbusters. Yeah. And he just like kind of followed, you know, like he's in the car or something or, you know, hanging out in the back or eating like at the house or something. And Peter's like, yeah, that's my pet. <laughs> you know, I, I thought and that then he be cool. becomes like her pet. Her, yeah, right. Her yeah. Brother's pet. That, that'd be amazing, you know, just. But anyway, you can't have, I guess, too much fan service, right? You gotta, they got to keep some stuff for the future. But that's why I think it happened to Slimer. Mm-hmm. What'd you guys think of podcast? I thought that I lo- kid I did a really podcast. good job. He was yeah. good. Yeah. That could have been terrible. That was like his second movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. It could have been terrible. But yeah, that kid that kid played it really, really well. Like it's, <laughs> Yeah. And it, that's the other thing about this movie is like, this is like a very, um, like the first two were you know more on the lines of an adult adult movie so this one i feel like straight straight family slash like kids movie oh they said to me i felt like they had some alluding things to boning yeah the, i guess they, so how they yeah, but that's just to like keep the parents occupied since they're gonna be watching yeah the and i'm not I, i'm not saying that as a knock either because i think it it worked like for this obviously but yeah i mean i just felt like this one like went more towards and i don't know if that's like because of like I mean, obviously the Stranger Things effect, right? Like, I feel like they definitely like went that way, but it worked for me. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple other notes I had. One, uh, we talked a little bit about it, but I, I fucking love Paul Rudd. Like he just, he, he's kind of the same in every movie, <laughs> you know? Uh, he, he brings that kind of like goofy- Steve, please be respectful. Sexiest man alive, Paul Rudd. Oh, that's right. Yeah, thank that's you, true. Todd. Tell Sexy them. Man. Thank you. Sexiest man alive, Paul Rudd right yeah he just like i love his style like the kind of just bumbling idiot but smart at the same time and just i i find he's a delight man I he's just, have, he's very believable as a teacher he is <laughs> and i love that he makes him watch more Cujo. films like yeah. Cujo. Yeah. Cujo and Cujo and child child play. Child play. yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome <laughs> uh, that's too good um yeah and the uh, the last thing i guess i want to say is i don't know about you guys i did not expect them to bring egon back um, mm, to that no. level so we see him in the first scene in shadows and i thought okay that's a clever way of kind of putting egon in the movie without putting egon in the movie you know like a, a flashback as to how he died just to kind of explain why he's not there 
And I thought, oh, that's clever. And then throughout the movie, you get hints of him kind of helping out uh, and everything. And I thought that was cool. But never in a million years did I think they would CGI him and bring him in. And that's something that Todd kind of alluded to with uh, Star Wars. When they made episode seven, I wanted to see Luke, Han, and Leia, and Chewie on the Millennium Falcon one last time. Because that's kind of what you were waiting for. That's why you wanted another Star Wars film. Ghostbusters is the same way. I wanted to see the four Ghostbusters together one last time. And when Harold Ramis passed away in 2014, I'm like, shit, we're never going to see that. Like, it's over. That that dream is gone. We're never going to get a proper Ghostbusters 3. And the fact that they gave us that, like, it made me emotional. I, I was, this is, I never expected it. And to, to have him at that level where he's just full body apparition, fighting ghosts with them was just fucking blew my fucking mind and i am so happy i didn't know that going in um you know it's just it was amazing and honestly it was like the perfect send-off for him yeah uh, to me like it was just the perfect moment for this movie I, I was thinking like how i don't even know what the word is but for his son to make this movie and then to have his dad right well, it's not his it's not his son it's uh who is it um Harold Ramis is uh the director the, the director's, the director's son, son that was directed it yeah it's a I James Ramis what am I talking about You're never mind I've been right now that for the record I didn't say that right <laughs> yeah no. no but I, I see how you got confused but no it's uh you know it was more like his friend more than no it just could have been like kind of trashy it could they could have it could have come off as trashy and it didn't like right. I was tearing up for good reasons and that's exactly what they should have done with star wars man like bringing it back to that again like handled it correctly with this one because people that made it respected the series other than that and it was just like it was awesome yeah if you know that going in it's it's definitely a bummer if you know that yeah yeah spoiled so don't listen to this episode yeah (laughs) no i i agree i was not i thought you know like steve said and i'm sure that guy will do cons that that guy who played Egon in the beginning at some point um but uh yeah like it it was like they never even hinted at it which was great like they just had like you know him helping her along the way but like invisibly and then just like when he like grabs I and I didn't tear up I cried like a bitch like I like tears streaming down my face when I saw Egon like holding his granddaughter uh with the proton pack and uh it was just it's so beautiful. And then you just see the four of them and you see the f- other three Ghostbusters look over and react to uh, seeing, you know, Egon there. It was so cool. I'm getting a little emotional talking about it right now, honestly. Let um, it up, let it up, Tiger, let it up. <laughs> no, it was, I mean, it was great. It was beautiful. And it was like, it's like just the perfect send off um, for Egon and for Harold and Ramis. So, yeah. I wonder why you guys weren't expecting it. Cause I was. Were you? Really? Yeah, I was like, off. obviously, if he's opening the movie, they like his granddaughter is having trouble. Everyone's not failing, but everyone's trying to do their part and nothing is working. So I thought he was going to come in a, maybe like 10 minutes earlier than he did. Yeah, no, so I was I, like, I, they have I, to do I, it. I didn't think they I mean, would. I didn't I, think I really it was going to be as tasteful as it was. I was just like, oh, how's this going to end up? But yeah, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, I thought it'd be like a hint like that he was mm-hmm. there kind of like an aura like i feel him here or some, yeah. so, something like that but the mm-hmm. full last blown show him and have a final moment with each ghostbuster is like damn mm-hmm. they really went for it and yeah had respect it, it played off like better than i could have imagined yeah yeah i mean like todd said i mean it could have like played off like bad <laughs> like they, they took a big risk here right because like you are throwing in this beloved character um and you know him being passed away it could have came off as distasteful um or in bad in poor taste but it it just came off like just so so damn good and it's the, just the, the perfect tribute for him mm-hmm. well i don't i think there were a lot of people who had his back that wouldn't have let them do it yeah. poorly like the other oh, castmates yeah. his family everyone else mm-hmm. who was involved in the other ones like i think it was in good hands yeah no, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Aykroyd and uh, and Bill Murray and uh, Ernie Hudson, they, they, I'm, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't have signed on if they mm-hmm. thought there was any sort of disrespect to Harold Ramis. So also, it was, go for it. Sorry, Steve. Or sorry, Joe. 
Um, no, it was also a bummer knowing the backstory with Bill Murray too, and him like having a falling out and yeah, during uh, like, during uh, what's day. it, the Groundhog, Groundhog Day, day. yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Wait, I, yeah, tell the that. story because I don't know it. There's nothing really, not a big story. There's, I guess, egos were involved, you know, and they just grew apart. Yeah. And Harold Ramis of, uh, directed Groundhog Day. And, oh, cool. They had a great friendship, and then they kind of they fell off for years and years and years until his passing. I, I believe I think he visited him in the hospital. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Though. Yeah, no. I, I I had heard that too. Um. It was kind of weird too, like to think about that's what I did. I mixed them up. Like to think about like them saying goodbye to a character slash your friend in a movie that's not there. It's got to mess with your soul a little bit, you know, from their Mm -hmm. perspective, especially since they had a stupid falling out over some bullshit created difference. You know what I mean? But it's also closure, right? Closure. They could like no one else gets closure like that. That's really a unique situation for them to have some kind of real life closure with it too like they've been talking about doing ghostbusters 3 since 89 <laughs> since uh, ghostbusters 2 and it's happened know, and it's not happening it's happening right. it's and, not and harold ramus and dan Aykroyd were the two big proponents of doing a ghostbusters 3 and then he passes that dream is gone to come back and finally like complete it and do it properly it was yeah it was yeah and they kept saying they need Bankman or they're not doing it he didn't want right. to do it so it's like it's gotta Here's that's like, gotta fuck with him yeah so i and i I don't think it was necessary, like, to bring Vakeman. I think you could have done Ghostbusters without him. I really do. Like, I mean, yeah, he's, like, he's an integral part of the Ghostbusters. But after what, and we can get into it now, I guess. After watching the post credit scenes, I'm like, I think you could make a Ghostbusters without him. Like, so, er- obviously. Now in the you can, I think. Now you can. Maybe you couldn't have, like, back then. But, like, looking at it, like, so in the post credit scene, I'm going to go to the last one first to make this point. Um, but in the uh, the second post credit scene, we see uh, Ernie Hudson, uh, Winston, uh, Winston, the Winston character. He's like become a, like a multi millionaire, really successful businessman. And you know him and uh, Janine are talking, and uh, basically what we see is he buy he buys the firehouse uh, back. And from what we are to assume is that he is going to reopen the Ghostbusters in what is, form? Is that a plot hole? Know? The Starbucks. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, with the Starbucks. Uh, he, he, he could he could have just said that too, you know, just like okay. it, it like kind of one of those things. Like I think it's yeah, a Starbucks. Kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. kind of like just a you know a comment. Right. Uh so, but after you know seeing that post credit scene, I was like, okay, like I think what they could do here is just bring Ackroy. If Bill Murray didn't want to come back, just bring back Ray and Winston, and they can be like they can train they can like train the the new ghostbusters for a new generation uh type thing so yeah i mean so i when, think when's it can bake roll them for sure sam why are you shaking your head she doesn't want it no don't joe like don't it. want it what do you mean joe doesn't think it's gonna happen he doesn't think Call the fandom out. is great enough he doesn't think no. this something will survive out of this yeah so that's another point we can get into um yeah so sam and i were talking about it i was like I don't know if they're even with the post credit scene. I don't know if they're going to make another Ghostbuster. I was like, it took them forty years to make a third one. Yeah, this one is successful and whatnot, but I, I I'm not holding my breath. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, is is Bill Murray going to want to come back? And if Bill Murray doesn't want to come back, are they going to do another one? I think yes. I think, take they will. I, I think this was a reopening of the franchise. Uh, okay. I think Sony has reason to to do it, and it uh, like exceeded expectations on the first weekend. I think word of mouth is going to bring this like even more. There's just there there's a lot of money to be made here, you know. Uh, toy yep. lines and Ghostbusters has been popular throughout the whole time that there was right. like Ghostbusters uh, Afterlife, right? So I think this will just bring new kids into it. Uh, they'll relate with the younger Ghostbusters and. Yeah, I think there's a huge opportunity here. Do they bring all the kids back? You think? You think that's what we I could think, do? Yeah, and we'll get a question about this soon. Uh, I do think the the kids are kind of like the next generation of Ghostbusters. Why would you have a twelve year old though carry a movie in New York? It it seems like it would, I don't know how that would work personally. Depends what when do you they mean? do it, I guess. Right? It could be like, like in a few years. Yeah, I can see Finn Wolfhard because he's what sixteen, going on seventeen, something like that. But then he's, the girl's yeah. twelve in middle school. It'd be kind of weird. 
Yeah, well, yeah they, but they it felt... might be a few, a few years to where they all are living at the fire station because they sure. have no home. Finn's gone off to college. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I believe they're all older than what they portrayed. And the movie was filmed a while ago because of COVID and everything. It was like pre-COVID. So I think by the time they would make an Afterlife 2, they can play him off as being like in their 20s. That's true. And Good just point. play it that way. Yeah, I see. I think what I would like to see anyway is bring back, if you can bring back all three, great. Winst, you know, bring back Winston Ray and uh, Bankman and the three, and like have the three of them kind of be the main characters. And like you can do, you know, them training these kids and you can have Janine in there as, you know, the secretary once again and stuff. And it just kind of like that way, like they're carrying the film, Todd, rather than the kids carrying the film, you know, but like the kids can still sort of be like the main characters, but like, you know, the three Ghostbusters are like, you know, the focus point. Um, I think that would be cool. And I think it'd be a great segue to kind of, and then just kind of let them ride off obviously because you know i mean you can't just keep bringing them back back and back because obviously they're getting too old now to uh be fighting ghosts yeah. you gotta or have they, paul rudd in there too yeah, yeah. And you could, honestly that would be a great opportunity to bring oscar uh so the other <laughs> uh end credit scene uh, confirms that sigourney weaver's character dana is still with uh peter mm-hmm. and they're they're still together and obviously uh oscar is her son that's established in Ghostbusters 2. Whether or not it's canon, we don't know. That's going to be a question in the question period, which I discussed in length with other people. But Oscar could be, you know, the fourth Ghostbuster. So can Lois Tully. Technically, he's a Ghostbuster. He's a Ghostbuster at the end of <laughs> Ghostbusters 2. So there's a lot of outs, I think, to make a problem. I was bummed he didn't return. Me too. Yeah. The, I think he unretired from acting after this movie. Oh, wait, I thought he retired, unretired for this movie. No, he unretired to Bummer. do. Um, uh, the Ryan Reynolds commercials? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids so for Disney Plus. Oh, that's off yeah, to him though, it. man. Like that's that's a good dad right there. You know, putting oh, yeah. it all on hold, take care of his kids. Like Jesus, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a man right there. Mm-hmm. Wait, so he is acting now? Yes, he did. Uh, he's doing the new Honey, I Shrunk the Kids for Disney Plus, and I'm assuming they would probably ask him back for the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, you guys want to get in some of the questions? So, mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you can ask us those questions on social media at the Horror Squad Podcast or on the Discord where we talk about all sorts of stuff. And people hey, have now. I'm so sorry to ruin your vibe there. How cool was that burger place, though? Rollerblading. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, wow, I want this to exist. You guys don't have Sonic Drive Through in your home? Yes. Yeah, they're not no. skate. They don't skate have skates. Some though. of them skate. <laughs> What? Back in Wichita, never... they had skates. I, don't, I doubt teenagers can skate now. I went to a roller, dirt, roller <laughs> rink true. with my kids and like it's fucking walking on ice practically. Mm-hmm. All right. I can skate like a motherfucker though. I'm like an angel. Oh, me ice, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and Steve, of course, can ice skate. That's right. Canadian. We, we grew up with uh, <laughs> skates on our feet. That's right. Um, all right. Yeah. So you can ask those questions on Discord as well. That's what I was getting at. Uh, so I'm going to do a reverse from last week. We started getting audio questions. So, my man Chuck, take it away. Hey squad, it's Captain Amazing 85, a.k.a. Chuck, coming in with some more questions. With the complete disregard for the sequel, do you think Vigo will be in the next one? I hope not. Yeah, let's move on. (laughs) Who's Vigo? The second? The The second villain. See, I was telling Joe when we watched it, because they have that um, they have like a painting like that at Count Orlock's here in Salem. And I always thought it was Lord of the Rings. Like that's how <laughs> boring he is. Like Jesus. Anyway, can, so I, I hope they don't. They could I, do better. I, I think the more interesting question in here for you guys though is, is the second canon now? Because they make zero reference to <laughs> yeah. any of that. Even in the disasters that happen, even though there's a huge apocalyptic disaster in part two, they right, they disregard the year. So, yeah. did part true. two happen in this universe? That's I'm I guess gonna, the question. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. They, like you said, they completely why, why disregarded it. Because it, it's, well, it's it not. You, you think they would at least like drop First a line. mention of something happening right in, in 1989? Right, like nothing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and they. That's and, yeah. Yeah, because they go 1984. If they wanted to make the second canon, they would have put 1989, but they just gloss right over and go to 2021. And, and, so yeah, and they, they even specifically mention that after the events of 84, the Ghostbusters kind of just broke up, did their own things, mm-hmm. and never mentioned the fact that they come back together in 89 
because uh, that's kind of what but happens, right? It's was only... two really not that eventful as far as the enemy. Like maybe he just wasn't as powerful as Gozer. So that's why, like, it wasn't part of Gozer's plan. That's why the year wasn't on. I mean, the... no, yeah, I, I get that. But like when they research the Ghostbusters, when they talk about like events that happen, they completely gloss over it. They took the fucking Statue of Liberty out of the right, uh, water right. <laughs> <laughs> and basically destroyed it. And yeah, but there's so only much so much you can pack in to let remind and tell all of the younger people what all happened. Yeah, I think a, at least a quick mention of it, like it happened. Yeah, I, you know? I agree. I I think even well, just if the... that's the case, you think you would think that they know. Like, why did they forget about the Ghostbusters a long time ago? They literally saw a ghost and like saved New York. I think Paul said Paul Rudd said um, <clears throat> there hasn't been a ghost sighting in over thirty years, so maybe everyone just. Yeah. Yeah, like all the, all the adults remember, but obviously none of the kids, they were all, you know, that's like my brothers and shit. Like they probably have never even seen Ghostbusters. It's yeah. like the younger generation, like they just- Yeah, but they, they probably would have saw a TikTok about the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Someone would have been like, hey guys, have you ever heard about the Ghostbusters? Well, 30 years ago, my parents recalled- They'd be like, this. that's lame anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think McKenna oh. said it too. Like, um, well, that happened before we were born. Like, why would yeah. we know that? Yeah, yeah like that. I get exactly. it. I'm just being right. devil's advocate. But uh, fun fact, my nine-year-old likes the original better than this new one, although he loved the new one too. Nice. Oh, fun. You know, some good taste there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, actually, Chuck brought up a good point when we were chatting that I we wish that in um, Winston's, like, office, they had the painting from part two, like... <laughs> The, you yeah. know, where the, where the, the four of them are yeah, like that angels, been that would have been a nice mm-hmm. nod to kind of just say that it, it happened, you know, but right. nope, nothing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if there is a part two to Afterlife, if they'll maybe tackle some of the stuff that happened there, or like maybe the Statue of Liberty is like a different color because they have to replace it or <laughs> something, you know. Uh, all right, so check, take it away for question number two. Does anyone in the squad have a local Ghostbusters team? Um, yeah, I know there is, there's definitely the Ghostbusters of Salem and the go there. I know Boston has a couple of Ghostbusters chapters. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a part of them, but I've seen them around and they're, they're all awesome. <laughs> now you're talking Ghostbusters, like the franchise or Ghostbusters, like, oh, wait, what are we talking about? Par- I'm sorry, normal maybe, Ghostbusters. Maybe I, <laughs> it could be, no, both. he didn't specify it. So, Okay, no, no, I'm talking about like the movie, yeah. Right, like okay, the, yeah. Yeah, the guys drive around in the Ecto, right, Ecto right. ones and wear the costumes and stuff, yeah. Talking about cosplayers. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, yeah, cool. but... They're not but, like, like official so- chapters of Ghostbusters. Yes, they are. Though. They're a cha- they're called, that's what they do now. They're like yeah. these big like fan groups. Not that, the Salem like, one. It's called the Sa- the Ghostbusters of Salem. They have mm-hmm. like their own chapter. Every Ghostbusters like group has like a chapter. Like that's how it how it goes. Yeah, we have one. So why didn't you answer the question as if it, Steve was talking about that? I, That's fine. I did. No, I, was I just thought asking. I did. Yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, even like my fucking boring ass city has a Ghostbusters chapter, so mm-hmm. it's uh, I guess it's out there. Let's start a chapter in the Discord. Yeah, Ghostbusters chapter. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be awesome. Uh, all right, Chuck's third question. Where is Oscar? Who cares? That's what I honestly like. I I don't I don't care to see. I don't care to see Oscar. I don't care if he comes back. I'm sorry if I'm being rude about it, but you know what? He's not in college because he's in his thirties. He's 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 a colonel in the army. I mean, Steve, you seem to be the one that wants to see Oscar. Why do you want to see Oscar come back so much? You just want to see like the second, like something. Uh, I I think. I think he's an important character to the lore of Ghostbusters. Okay, and it would be an interesting story thread as to what happened to him. Uh, does he still have like possession in him? Like, you know, he was possessed f- by yeah. Vigo for a while. Uh, and he's also, you know, Dana's son. And I'm assuming now uh, Peter's stepson, uh, depending on did part two happen? Cause she might not have a son because we don't know uh, if part two, you know, that's a part two thing. So I guess it depends how they treat part two in the next one, whether it was canon mm-hmm. or not. Uh, so I, I I just want to mention too, Steve, I, I that uh post credit scene with the two of them, I didn't take it as them being together still. I just took them took it as them being like friends, but I mean I could be wrong. 
I don't know how Sam. Do, do your friends shock you? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Right. Okay. I especially if you had past history, right? Because like they were obviously on again, off again. Like they broke up after part one. But we don't know that because there was nothing after part one. So maybe they never broke up after part <laughs> right, one. Right. Yeah, that is true. If right? part two didn't exist. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were together. Yeah, okay. Me too. I thought that's I thought what they, they were. were together yeah. Too. All right. Yeah, and their relationship is at the kinky point where they have to like shock each other. To get it. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. It's yeah. Gorney's fucking smoke show still, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. She when are we gonna get? When are we? She gonna come back and do Ripley though? Oh my god! I know. She's busy doing seven Avatar movies right now. So. <laughs> oh no! Make, who make to, him, make who has to see? Who wants to see more Avatar movies? I do. I, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted them back in 2009. Though, I don't. I've never even seen the first one. That's I good. think you like it, Sam. I, I liked it. Yeah. Why yeah, do you Sam, think that? I think Sam would uh, like it too. I think it's you good. just enjoy it. It's got it's some good. strong women characters in there. It's got oh. some good action, but not over the top. It's got a good it, love story. It looks great too. Like it's visually. got a sex scene with hair. Yeah. <laughs> Zap, that doesn't get you. I don't know what would. It's probably not better than Twilight. Like, isn't nothing, it? Nothing's aren't, better than Twilight. <laughs> aren't we past? Aren't we past that the Avatar like phenomenon though? Like, I feel like we'll they see. had their chance. We're pretty much all play. avatars already. We're, like. we're talking about a movie that's. 30 years since the last, <laughs> since the last right. proper yeah, one. So we're still talking about Avatar right now. Yeah, so. Avatar, yeah. Is 10, you know, <laughs> Avatar is the number one movie of all time. You know, unfortunately. Know. How so. was there not a sequel though? Like, I just like. Because he's like building different technology. Like, that's that's yeah. exactly fucking crazy. Yeah, James crazy. Cameron right. to, he has to invent a new camera before he makes a new movie now. It's yeah. insane. All right. All right. Oh, uh, wow. let, let, that's let's... insane. Yeah. Oh, he's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. Wow. I, I think that's the what they did with the underwater. first Avatar. Yeah, I think it's a whole thing. Wow. Good for you. Um, all right. So uh, on to Chuck's last question. Lastly, Dr. Egon Samler. What's that food pairing? Is it marshmallows? <laughs> <laughs> I was like that one. I like that one too. Um, hamburgers and fries from the burger joint. Oh, hell yeah. I would have said it. And toy. metal pieces of metal. Oh, Sharp metal! Oh my God! So you're gonna get tetanus trying to kill die. people. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Don't eat metal, kids out there listening to the show. What are we gonna say, Joe? I said a Twinkie and a Nestle Crunch bar. Oh, like that's to wash it down. Love it. Yeah, exactly. For dessert. Yeah, Crunch bars are dope. Sorry, Twinkies. <laughs> but what about uh, s'mores? That oh, works too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was really enjoying being roasted. Yeah, I, I those loved fucking it so much. The best. <laughs> they were so cute. Yeah, they were. It was just, I, I love how creative they got with them trying to kill each other, essentially. Yeah. Right? So, yeah Little nice. monsters. Blender. Uh, yeah, so thanks, Chuck, for the audio questions. I, I really thanks, love uh, the audio. Like, people had really good feedback when we did it last week, and hopefully really? more people uh, participate. People like our, our listeners have some awesome fucking accents. <laughs> just knowing, knowing that from doing like uh live streams with them like we need to hear them more so it's mm-hmm. awesome uh so this one i actually missed last week so sorry about that uh it was sent to us on instagram by halloween horror uh new horror 2022 jeepers creepers reborn thoughts if there's anything like three it's gonna suck asshole um yeah i'm i'm good i'll watch it but three was terrible uh Dickhead's not fucking directing Who's directing it? it? No, I don't think okay, he, he, he has nothing to do with it other than have created the characters. All right, mm-hmm. good. That's a plus. But he gets know. money, so I'm not going to watch it. I like that stance, Sam. I like that stance. I mean, we'll I mean, probably end up covering it, maybe. Say if things weren't the way that they were, I would be pumped about it. I would watch it. You know what? He won't get money if we pirate, pirate at the movie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Stick it to uh-huh. the man. <laughs> yeah, tell him. Maybe this one will be better if this is getting like I don't know if this is getting a theater release or if it's going like the last one was straight to sci-fi. So I mean, I don't it was know if you so get much bad. Than that. Regardless yeah. of the director, yeah, that, that movie bad. was super bad. Yep. Uh, what's the know. title of it? Like Jeepers Creepers? What? Reborn. 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 Mm. So Do maybe they're gonna reboot about it? it. Yeah, I think they're rebooting it like without hit without Victor Silva like attached yeah. to it. But it's it's and he he tarnished the legacy of it. So I don't know mm-hmm. how you can not associate with them. Yeah, but here's the issue with with that, in my opinion. Like he did that, he got out, he was like out of jail when the first one came out. So why all the outrage like now? Like the movie was like beloved 
but like he had already time, he, he had already committed those horrible crimes yeah i guess that that could be the reason i guess the internet was around then too but like, i know just just think about how much has changed in the last five years alone right compared right. to women's jeepers creepers 98 yeah something like that I mean, was it that or long? wow i thought it was like it was, two, it was the early fucking, 2000s but oh, was like 2001 but yeah 2001 yeah well, mm-hmm. same, yeah. same yeah. realm yeah same realm yeah um, yeah i mean that's a good point like obviously like the climate has changed quite a lot since then um i mean you could do a whole episode on this argument but um yeah it's i mean like crimes and everything is more well known now for good and right good and bad. yeah but i also heard that uh the creeper ain't coming back either whole new creeper jonathan breck ain't gonna oh, be the really? creeper in this one either yeah like mm-hmm. a whole different look probably the same look but different actor oh okay yeah, Dwayne Johnson's gonna play the creeper. <laughs> nice. No, <laughs> this I've never creeper. seen a movie with him. Yeah, you have. Like what? I have no idea. Joe and I were talking about. There's one movie I'm gonna see with him. It's the dog movie that has Kevin Hart, where he's the dog of Superman. I'm gonna watch that one. <laughs> um, you haven't seen like the new Jungle Cruise yeah, or J- J- Oh J- hell no, Jumanji, Jumanji is so Jumanji good. was great. No. Uh, no, I haven't watched them because he's in it. Really? I think only- like Jumanji's really good. I think you like that one. Yeah, me too. I haven't I even seen The Fast and Furious, and I actually I like either. that franchise. You just yeah, like I- you like Vin Diesel. I don't you think I've seen like a full a rock movie car. either. <laughs> really? Be cool or nothing like? No, no. Doom. You seen Doom? You seen Doom? I, know uh, you have. Uh, I have seen Doom. Yeah. It's a 2005 like space. Yeah, the, the mummy is Scorpion movie. King too. Like, <laughs> oh, I have seen the Scorpion King. Yeah. Oh, there you true. go. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I actually only reason I saw Scorpion King was because I was supposed to go see G- Jason X, but I was under 18 and they wouldn't let us. We bought tickets and then they wouldn't let us into the theater with ID. D, so we went and saw Scorpion there, King. There's your punishment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to the Scorpion King room. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> the rock was there at the door greeting people too. Like, no. Right, <laughs> the worst CGI of all time. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yeah. um, all right. So next question is from Mishu. We kind of answered it already. How did you feel about Spangler being brought back with CGI? You know, we talked well, about it during our beautiful. review. Good. Great. Yeah, way better than it could have been. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me just get to the questions. On I haven't heard anyone say anything negative about that. Surprisingly, yeah. people aren't really talking about it like as much yeah. as I, th- I thought people would. Like they're not spoiling it, which is rare. that's it's great. great. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, I got a quite a bit of conversation on Letterbox though, and the general consensus is like a lot of people our age were crying in the movie theater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> based on that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It was a good time. This one does seem a bit, de- even though we all loved it, it does seem a bit divisive online. I've seen on really uh, quite a, seen quite that. a lot of I've seen quite a lot of negative too, like especially on Letterbox. Like what? What are they saying? Um, some people said. Uh, I think the uh, the biggest complaint I saw was that it was too much fan service. Yeah, I. I what I've the hell that. is wrong with you guys? If you <laughs> do not one. like fan service movies, <laughs> don't fucking see a movie that's been out for fucking thirty fucking years <laughs> that you watched as a fucking child. Watch a brand new movie. Hello. <laughs> Uh, next question from uh, Cody, Oddjob vs. 007. Would any of you like to see a sequel with these characters or maybe uh, with a whole other cast in another city? No, so can... I do not want that. <laughs> which, which, which one? I don't want a whole new cast in a new city. Okay. Maybe if we all, maybe if we're like the original cast, you know, and like we meet up with a few other people, but not the main group. I agree because I don't Kinda want to like how Twister story. does it, you know? Like there's mm-hmm. Helen Hunt and her crew, and then we also see a few other crews. I got sucked into that movie again the other day. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Carrie Ellis was like, I get off this radio. Fuck you. He's like, no, man, you need to get off the road. It's going to swing over. He's like, uh, shut the fuck up. And then he dies. I'm like, damn, Carrie Ellis, what's, what's yeah. wrong with you? You should listen. You should have. You're right. Trick. <laughs> good movie. Uh, but yeah, it is a good movie. Uh, t- to answer that, we should probably cover Twister. We've talked about it so much on this on yeah. this show. <laughs> um, Dude. <laughs> oh, he's so Philip Seymour Hoffman's so good in that. Uh, but to answer the question, uh, no, I, I don't want to see that. Uh, the second part, like new cast, like we already established all these characters. Why would you get rid of them and then have to go and try to establish like a whole new set of characters? It just doesn't make sense. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like, why? Well, this movie would be for nothing if it, that's the whole point of this movie was to pass the torch. I thought so. Why would you just ignore that? You know. All right. So the next one comes to us from Eric. First, he says an observation. Is Todd, the two-time reigning defending trivia champion, just a trivia catfish? I heard those scores over on Left XP, and yikes. <laughs> just he's good at horror. That's, that's, is he that's, implying that's, that, like, it's a fluke? <laughs> or is he implying that, like, you, I don't know. Like, I'm a, I don't get it. Fuck you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Eric. Yeah, he's a man's man. He walks outside of negative 10 degree weather in fucking Speedos. So. That's right. <laughs> I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm really good at the horror stuff. I'm not good at like the uh, overall like Marvel mm-hmm. video game realm. Steve fucking dominates. It's a good, it's a good time. But I think it'll be more even now that it's everything as opposed to just video games, which we had for like six months there. So check out our other podcasts as well. I'm getting that. Uh, and let's not while we're plugging other podcasts. That's a great podcast as well. Hosted by the you. lovely Sam and Michelle. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. And his other question. Steve mentioned in the last pod that Wait, a toy... can I give a shout? <laughs> oh, sure. Sorry, I was trying to talk, but I was on mute. Yeah. Mondo, if you're listening, Michelle says she loves you back. Oh, this love <laughs> connection. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, Salem Seymour. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse us, go full oh, yeah. circle here. <laughs> look, yeah, look for him in Salem coming this summer. He's creeping, he's creeping. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Eric's second question. Steve mentioned in the last pod that a toy from the animated series uh, line makes an appearance as a ghost in this movie. If you could pick any of the toys to make a big screen appearance, which would you choose? I, for one, go for these traps. So he describes these two traps uh, that are these toys that they had back then. There's one uh, orange one and one purple one, where it's like, kind of like these little monsters with teeth, and you'd open them up, and it would lock in. And if you press the tongue, it snaps its uh, its jaws on you. And as a kid, that's fucking terrifying. No, as an adult, <laughs> it's not that scary. But as a kid, terrifying. And they're really cool designs. I'll put a picture up on the Discord of what they look like. I'm actually holding them during the recording because I did have these toys. Uh, so yeah, so that's a good option. And I did talk about the big purple guy with the, with the big eye that pops out. Also a really cool toy that I loved as a kid. Also one that I own. So do you guys remember the toys enough to answer the question? I know I can, but. I don't remember them too well. I just remember vividly as Egon's figure. Mm -hmm. Because his hair was like, it was, well, it was like the cartoon. It was like super. Yeah, his his wave was like super. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Accentuated. Yep. Um, The only, only, oh, sorry. The only figures I still have is the, the firehouse and the figures themselves like the guys not any ghost mm-hmm. or anything yeah I, I can't answer this well because the only thing i really remember fondly is the is the firehouse like todd so i do now that's but steve brought those out and i remember those and i definitely had those so thank you for that nostalgia trip right there <laughs> yeah, I, I actually put a picture of the ones i have left um over on the discord uh but to answer the question so my runner-up is this little like kind of purplish red guy mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a big mouth and he's he's wearing fucking sneakers. Uh, the toy is you'd pull this like uh, plastic kind of string out of him and he would like fly away like he, he has we- uh, one wheel under him and he'd like go super fast on your floor. So that would be really cool just because it looks so goofy wearing those sneakers and I thought that would be a really cool one. So there'll be a picture of that in the Discord as well. But one of my favorite toys when I was a kid and the one I would have loved to have seen and I remember him vividly from the real Ghostbusters. So there's just skeleton character that you'd open his rib cage from the back. You put a uh, Ghostbuster inside of him. And when the Ghostbuster was inside of him, his head would pop out his eyes. Oh and my God. It's like That's really, cool. it's really scary skeleton character. <laughs> and I used to fucking love him as a kid. Uh, and I kept his toy as well. And I love this toy. And I think he would have been really cool, especially if somehow he trapped like Paul Rudd for like five seconds you know just really quickly and you see his eyes pop out uh that was probably one of my favorite ones when i was a kid as well so but there are a bunch and like i said if you check out the discord uh, maybe joe can put it up on our social media as well um there, i have a bunch of the toys still. that is so cool steve thanks for showing us those that just yeah, made nice. me so happy <laughs> Yeah, I'll post that all, all up on our socials, the pictures of all yeah, I'll try to take a better yeah. picture. Because yeah. I, I, I'm terrible at photography. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah i i really loved the toys i had a lot of them as a kid i had like the multiple blasters i had one that shot these little like uh, yellow pellets i had one that had the back was that the gun that shot the pellets yeah it was a gun yeah it was like an air gun right yeah that's yeah right. i had that one too yeah the, the, the air a... the trap the air pump that you would... that's right yeah exactly. yeah 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 uh, I had one that was attached to the backpack and you take it out. And that one had also the purple styrofoam, but uh, sorry, the yellow styrofoam, but it was just kind of like this swirly. Yeah. It was like maybe, a weird plastic thing. Yeah. It was like kind of two inch long and it would like spin around when you shot it. And the other one I had was another blaster. Cause my mom <laughs> really got me like the good stuff. The ghostbusters was my favorite thing as a kid was uh, the same thing, but it would project ghosts on this on the wall so it had a light inside but you had to put these fucking like plastic kind of things inside almost like that um you know that toy that's like a red thing you put to your face and you click it's got like a little uh oh, yeah. wheel i forget what it's called um but it's it was a kaleidoscope is it that's a, no i don't i don't no, remember it's the like name the, like I, a view master is it I, is, is that, that what it's called? called it's like the red binocular thing and it yeah, has the that's little right. Yeah, view mask. I think it's called a view mask. Yeah. So it, it was the same concept, but with a gun, you'd put it inside and be a different ghost every time you'd like That's shoot. That's so cool. And that would project on the wall. So yeah, I I love. God, I loved Ghostbusters when I was a kid. I'm surprised you don't do like the chapter Ghostbuster thingies. No kidding, Steve. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of just going to events wearing. I don't know. Like I'm not. It's not. You're my right, Joe. To go to do parades and stuff like that. So. Uh, all right. Actually, this leads into our ne- next question from Weezerface. Do you think you could cut it as a Ghostbuster? Hell yes. no, man. Part two with the river slime and the fucking subway <laughs> heads. On, no Todd. thanks. Uh, I, I'm kind of, I'm probably, I'm clumsy, so I'd probably kill myself with the fucking proton pack. <laughs> You'd be like in the first movie where they almost killed the maid. Joe would just answer the phone. Yeah, there you go. I'd be Janine. Yep. Ghostbusters, what do you want? <laughs> that that uh, mate shot from the first one was real. I don't know if you know that. Um, what is it? The the mate shot in the first Ghostbusters. Uh, they put too many explosives on the cart and didn't tell her. <laughs> so her reaction is real because she didn't expect it to blow up that big. So when you watch the movie, look at her reaction. That's absolutely genuine reaction from her. She's perfect. I love that scene. Yeah. 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 The great. hell are you doing? <laughs> um yeah and for me I, I think so i'm not afraid of ghosts like that doesn't scare me at all so i think that alone would give me an advantage to bust some ghosts uh yeah i think it'd be a fun fun job to have you know but it does, it does look like busting it does look like a, a dirty job though they're they're always like if you watch the montage they're all fucking dirty after every uh, after every post ghost so that's cool uh still from okay cody i'll job done first double seven asked another question what do you think being slimed is like let the dirt, dirty jokes begin. Um, snot, a lot of snot. Yeah, slimy. probably pretty nasty. Yeah, slimy. That's the probably the best. like Nickelodeon getting slimed at the Nickelodeon yeah. Choice Kid Choice Awards. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I yeah. used to watch a show called You Can't Do That on Television, where they used to yeah. slime, slime people. It's kind of, but I think that slime seemed to be a little heavier, whereas I think mm-hmm. this one's a little gooier. Like, kind yeah. Of mm-hmm. Yep. I it, like. I just imagine like just like the slime you buy at the store just put that all over you and i guess that like if you ever put that on your hand i assume that's what it would feel like but just all over your body yeah shit yeah. stains i hate that shit <laughs> yeah um next question is from horror fan ryan uh would a ghostbusters movie work if it was a dark horror movie or and not a fun horror comedy absolutely yeah i mean it'd be a different style and everything but yeah i mean i i think it could definitely work as a horror movie as well Imagine them trying to fight like insidious ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be insane. Mm-hmm. See, I, I actually disagree on this one. Uh, I think what makes it a Ghostbusters movie is the mixture of horror and comedy. Uh, if you can have like a ghost busting uh, horror, like dark horror movie, but it wouldn't be Ghostbusters in the same way that I don't think a jokey exorcist movie should be called the exorcist it should just be called like something else you know the exorcism of you know whatever so i don't think a mainline ghostbusters film should be a a dark horror film uh i just think that's kind of what you know it's established in its own subgenre so that's my opinion anyway 
Um, I mean, do we already know what kind of movie Ghostbuster is like within the question? Yeah, uh, I, well, it's a horror comedy, right? That's kind of what. Well, I mean, like, okay, so it's like we're already aware of Ghostbusters, so I wouldn't be able to see it as it's like would you yeah, want to see a sequel that's bloody? Yeah, that, that's what a sequel. Oh no, no, okay. no. I I wouldn't want to see a sequel that's bloody either. I thought the question was asking, could the Ghostbusters concept work like with a new universe, yeah. not knowing the original yeah. anything about that? That's what right. I was wondering. That's what I thought too. Yeah, in that sense, I could see it. Yeah, but a uh, Ghostbusters movie, like with the name and the franchise, I don't think should be. No, it wouldn't work. That'd be, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, agreed. All right. Uh, next one's from Marla. That's a creature feature. Did y'all swoon at the destructive little Stay Puft babies? They were my favorite. Adorable. Heck yeah! <laughs> I was squealing. I was oh. like, oh, hee hee! Oh my God. So what was uh, your favorite? moment with the mini state bus i really the one that sticks out to me the most it, well when the first one comes out and he's like a little baby that one was really cute and then the one who's getting covered in the s'more with like the chocolate and he's like mm, this is so nice and cozy and he's just <laughs> yeah. smiling not knowing what's going on mm-hmm. yeah that's my favorite too <laughs> my favorite part is when podcast comes out of the ecto all gooped up mm-hmm. with their that's funny. Or I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Another nice nod to the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like it. I, even though I had seen it a million times in the commercials and stuff like that, it's the one that goes in the blender and then you think he's dead, but his face like appears on the like uh, on the side of the blender. Like he's yeah. happy about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. did like, see that one. Yeah. He's like skydiving. Yeah, like, in right. the yeah, yeah, that was cute. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, it was cool. I really like what they did with the little stay off. Now, of course, this is like the thing now where we got a baby fi. Everything. Baby Yoda, yeah. yeah. Baby Yoda, baby, <laughs> ba- baby Groot. Uh, I, we're yeah. getting a baby Mogwai in the new Gremlins. It's. Uh, are we getting a new Gremlins? The yeah, we are. Are we uh, really? The, I think it's the animated one. Like show? Oh, the cartoon. The oh, cartoon. Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah. I think it's a cartoon. I'm when the hell are we getting? Twenty twenty two sometime. Netflix, I think it's going to be on. Yeah, that's like one of the oh. streaming services. Cool. When are we getting the live action Gremlins? Like, we got a live action Ghostbusters yeah. now. When the fuck is a live action Gremlins going to happen? Yeah, if this one's successful enough, you know how it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's all the questions we got. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. We cannot do this segment yes, without you. Yes, thank you. Ready to rate it? Rate it. Rate this thing, hey, Stevie. Oof, I didn't wow. rate it on Letterbox this time. I held yeah, no, I saw that I'm talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, I, you can log it without rating it. <laughs> yeah. So I struggled with this one. You know, like I don't think it's a ten. Um, it's not perfect. Ghostbusters it's, is a ten. Ghostbusters is a ten. Uh, but like the nostalgia for Ghostbusters is. What, what's part two for you? Like a f- four point five for me because I just really, really love oh, it. Wow. You know. But it's nostalgia too. It's nostalgic glasses, and I understand that. Without nostalgic glasses, it's probably a four. Um, so this one, don't think it's a ten, but it's going to be as close as possible because I fucking smiled throughout it. I want to rewatch it immediately after, so I'm going right up to nine point five. Nice. Is this like? I mean, I'm assuming we're putting this in our horror list, right? Even though technically it's not I mean, like there's, a horror there, there's movie. There's ghosts and yeah. there's dead bodies. Had, and yeah. If you yeah. if you put King Kong in there, I think you have to put this in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I'll go next. Uh yeah. I mean, loved it. Uh, you know, I, I I had some issues with it. Like I said, there's some fan service stuff, but it's still just such a fun ride. And if you're a fan of the ghost of this franchise, I just can't imagine you not liking this movie. Like I just, I just don't like, if you don't like this movie and you're a Ghostbusters fan, you have no soul. So uh, in my opinion, <laughs> so I, I yeah, uh, God, I'm like, so on the line between an eight and a half and a nine, but talking about it tonight and just talking about the Egon stuff, I'm going to nine. Hmm. Um, I smiled, I laughed, I cried. I'm going to give it a nine as well. Yeah, I'll mimic what Sam said about getting all the emotions, even anger, man. Like, damn it, why couldn't you guys do this earlier? Would it have been as good? Maybe not, because part two wasn't as good as the first one, but um, uh, I loved it. I'm I'm right with Steve, nine and a half out of ten. Clearly my favorite 
movie of the year by far. It's like not even a contest at this point, which I'm happy because like I've been so dreading 2021. I'm so Thank happy God, we yeah. actually got one that I loved. <laughs> um, it's just good all around. Yeah, and I would say this is the best Ghostbuster since the first. I'll throw. I'll say that easily. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to rewatch. The other thing is, like, you know, Ghostbusters two. I watched probably a hundred times. So yeah, it's, uh, but it's probably a better movie. Like realistically, this one I think is a better mm-hmm. movie. But who knows when it when it comes out on Blu-ray? I'm gonna watch the shit out of it. You know, determine in like a year or two if I like it better than Ghostbusters mm-hmm. two. But uh, right, Sam. Yeah. Real quick, I know you didn't like, or you were a little bit overwhelmed by Finn Wolfhard. So lately, did you? How'd you like him in this one? What do you mean? I was overwhelmed. I thought a while ago you said you were tired of him. Did I? Maybe I did. Yeah, Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I I don't know. It's just I feel like it's the same character in Stranger Things. Angsty teenager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which it's not his fault. I mean, it's they never let him cut his hair or change the way he looks, but that's why he gets the job. So, I mean, I like I liked it. He wasn't like an a hole to. his sister or anything like that and he was like endearing with the girl he had a crush on so i mean i didn't mind i didn't hate him i didn't mind him i liked him cool Mm -hmm. i was telling this to steve too um when they're doing the credits i thought it was the perfect timing because they said with sigourney weaver i'm like when the fuck was she and then it pops up her scene i'm like oh that was clever yeah Yeah. that was great Yeah. (laughs) yeah Yeah, That's it's really all you need. Yeah, it's really all you needed from her too, like in the swan. Like otherwise, it would have been just like what Halloween Kills did, and just like pigeonholing characters in there that don't need to be in the story. So, mm-hmm. so, so I, I knew point. Sigourney Weaver was in the movie like prior to uh, seeing it because uh, I'd read that you know all the three main actors plus Sigourney Weaver plus uh, you know Janine came back. I thought when the fourth blaster came out at the end i thought it was going to be sigourney weaver no that would have been awful yeah but that's why i I thought it would be because i like i said (laughs) i i never expected egon to be in it Mm -hmm. why would you hate that because she was never a ghostbuster it just would have been lame right but i figured at that point (laughs) if they haven't introduced her like she's got to be there somewhere right she's like almost top build on this fucking film if you look at the imdb and stuff she's like number Mm -hmm. three or four so yeah, I, I really thought that's where they were gonna shoehorn her in, but uh, mm-hmm. no, I like I like what she did. You know, it's just a nice little cameo. Mm-hmm. Maybe I wish I we would see a little bit more, but I, I was happy. I was fine with it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'd be, I'd be okay if we get more of her in like the sequel. Yeah. If we get a sequel, you know, like that, would, I'd be cool with that. But I think for this, it was like the perfect just kind of cameo for her. And it's smart to like throw her as top billing on IMDb because now people right. are like, oh, Sigourney so Weaver, let me go watch and see where she is. <laughs> Yeah, but it's funny. I had the same thought as Todd. Uh, when I saw her name pop up, my first thought was like, shit, did I miss her? <laughs> like, and all that action. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, that was clever. Yeah. And I'd say like three quarters of the theater left before the post credit scenes. So if you oh. haven't seen it yet, like, stay tuned, please. We had a full, almost full theater, and there was only one couple left by the end of the. Aww. Wow. don't you feel like it's such a special bond? You're like, I know why you're <laughs> waiting. We're here. We see it. We know. Yeah. Well, every, I like, every single time i see a movie now like if it's a you know pop culture movie i'll first thing i'll do when the movie's over is i'll go on my phone and <laughs> and twitter is there a post credit and just because mm-hmm. you know movies do it all the time now so you got mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. sam so, and i did not do that for halloween kills and we waited through the whole credits for <laughs> nothing so. <laughs> happened, so i actually like watching the credits though i like seeing what all it's, goes it's into crazy it. when you really like look yeah. at how many people yeah. are involved like, yeah. like I, I think about it like i think of my job and what i do and how important it is to like canada and we don't even have that many people working on the project <laughs> you know like it's crazy mm-hmm. to think that Looks this like fucking, one actor has two like hour movie. Yeah, it's crazy it's crazy. um real quick what did you guys eat i had a uh, nachos and then we smuggled in costco hot dogs nice yeah. <laughs> that sounds delicious <laughs> Uh, I had twiz- my go-to Twizzlers uh, with uh, orange vanilla Coke. And I had no soda or any nachos or any popcorn. I was being what? a good girl. Yeah. Yeah. You got to splurge on a movie, though, girl. You got to get your nacho on. Well, I've been eating like garbage, so All I right. was right. skipping it. And I had uh, popcorn with uh, peanut M&Ms and uh, water. So Delicious. <laughs> Did you yeah, have jalapenos they... on the nachos, Todd? 
I did. I had double helping because my son didn't want his nice. jalapenos. Nice. So did I'm you like, do the jalapenos on me. the hot dogs? No, I did. Did you dip the hot dog in the nacho cheese? No, but I did mayo <laughs> and ketchup and relish on the hot dog, if that counts. Okay. Right. I'll take the mayo. Okay. <laughs> And right. next week, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know. So stay tuned. <laughs> well, it's got to be something easy because I'm going to be oh, disposed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Need well, we can, well, we can do something Christmas themed since like we're going to be in, in December. I don't, will the episode come out in December? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it will because. Uh, okay. Yeah. We so did we should Silent do... Night last year. Yeah, we did. And we did we did a few Christmas movies last year. We did P2, we did oh, Silent Night, right. Deadly Night, and we did uh, Rare Exports. It's great. Rare Exports, yeah. And we're gonna be doing my birthday movie soon. Ooh, so that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're probably the week after, no? Yep. Hey, uh, keep in mind we have the Exorcist book club going on for all the book readers out there. I'm starting this week actually. And uh, I guess oh yeah, this movie obviously is unanimously approved. Yeah. Um, go see it. All is right. It? Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, check out our Discord, come hang out if you're looking for some horror friends. It's the place to be. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.